Hello and welcome to the banks of the River Truerin in North Wales for this year's Paddles Up, the only international canoeing competition in the whole world where women, men and the older juniors compete on the same course and for the same trophy, the Norwich Union Paddles Up Trophy. Over the next five programmes we're going to be experiencing the thrills and I'm sure some of the spills as well of slalom canoeing, so I hope you'll be able to stay with us through the series. Now with me is the British Olympic slalom consultant John Gosling. And of course this time round Olympics is the name of the game, isn't it? Well that's right, Barcelona is so close now and many of the paddlers here competing for the Paddles Up trophy will be at those Olympics hoping to win gold or any medal really and representing their country. So how do you rate this year's Paddles Up course? Because it's not what paddlers are generally used to, is it? No, as you say, they're using slalom skills but with a difference. We're making them hit balls, pirouette their boats by dipping the back end and hit a, a ball that's suspended. Uh, balloons, all sorts of things and one or two new obstacles that uh, will cause them a few problems. And no doubt we'll see all those shortly. And what about the paddlers themselves? What sort of range have we got this time? We've got an incredible start list with Richard Fox as the World Cup champion, Sean Pierce from Great Britain who won the individual world championships, Ian Wiley from Ireland, winner of the pre-Olympics in men's kayak. It's very, very strong and in juniors we've got very, very strong paddlers. Well, we'll be seeing all those over the next few programmes, but let's take a look now at Heat One. Manuel Brissel from Grenoble in France awarded a bronze medal in the pre-Olympics in Spain back in August. 24-year-old David Ford, current Canadian champion and a definite for Canada's Olympic team. Ian Wiley from Ireland, a full-time paddler, the Irish champion in fact, and a gold medal holder from the pre-Olympics. Gareth Marriott from Great Britain. At age 21, he's the current British champion and picked up a gold at the pre-Olympics. Ian Raspin, another for Great Britain, the 1989 Paddles Up champion and a member of the British slalom team. Sean Pearce from Great Britain, a former British champion but current men's kayak world champion. And finally, Mark Vicenti from Spain comes from the very town where the Olympic slalom will take place. Aged just 17 and already a former Spanish champion. So, let's get going with the first competitor in the first Paddles Up heat this year. It's Manuel Brissot, aged 28, from Grenoble in France. Coming round to the first gate, goes through it. Green and white poles means he takes it in a downstream direction, but the most interesting obstacles just coming up. John Gosling. Yeah, new big ball there, hits that the bite. Now he has to move over and go for the paddles up through the tube. This is quite a difficult thing. Passes his paddle through, did it quite well, but lost time now. He cuts back into the fast-flowing water to a downstream gate there. Did that very well, Manuel. Coming out, always have problems there with the small stop of the wave turning back on itself. He's having to cut... Oh, he's in all sorts of trouble here. He won't be pleased at all. He's missed the target completely, and he's got thrown against the tyres there on the side. There's a target hanging, a yellow one there, Michael, and he's having real problems. And the problems just continued. Manuel Brissot eventually finished the course in a total of 2 minutes 14.48. Next at the start is the current Canadian champion. He's aged 24. His name is David Ford. He's in the Canadian Olympic team and he's setting off on the course now through the, uh, the green gate going downstream. And the bit he told me he hates most, which is trying to hit the ball. Last year he missed it. He's got it this time. So there we are, going on now onto the, uh, life, the actual um, life belt. Yeah, the passing, paddle through. Passing his paddle through there. He's got the time to beat there of Manuel of 2.14.48. Now, I think he can do that. He's, he's looking very confident and he was very... Oh, and he's missed the target, the kiss of death. He doesn't have to go again. He's got a five-second penalty there, but he's moving down. He won't be pleased at all there, Michael. Indeed not, but uh, we'll see how his run goes as he carries on down. Is it the roll gate coming up now? Yes, indeed it is. There he goes, an Eskimo run, a roll underneath, straight up the other side, and then it's down to the limbo. Now, we saw uh, we saw the last the last competitor, Manuel Brissot, going under, leaning forwards on the first one. He's done the same. We'll see what he does on the second one, and they are... Oh, oh, just got through that. Well done. Nearly missed that altogether. Yeah, he was uh, very fortunate there indeed comes to the bell, shouldn't have any problem here, he wants to keep high, but because they have to hit the bell, they lose that force for paddle stroke to cut across, but did very well now as he comes down to get the coin. Oh, he's having to put a backstroke in there, won't be pleased, putting it in his teeth, but moving along very nice and a good running time at the moment. 
I think we'll see a lot of paddlers holding the coins in their teeth because, of course, it does uh, leave their hands completely free. He seems to be getting around that very well, generally going sideways as he uh, goes through the chicane. Should have just about got... But there we go. Next thing is to deposit the coit on the left-hand side of the river. You'll see it in a second just coming in on the right-hand side of the picture. And there it is. In goes the coit. Lost the speed now for the four, but very tight indeed on that red pole, so he's going to well beat Brissol's time as he comes across there, Michael. We're doing an excellent time, 1.52 at the moment as he comes towards the final gate. It's 1.55.03 with an added five seconds penalties. Another champion now, this time the Irish champion. It's Ian Wiley, age 23. He comes from Dublin. He's a full-time paddler. He's made a good start, got through that initial gate. Heading for the ball, we'll see how he does on that, and hits it first time. Yeah, very well there, just clipped it, just what he needed to do. Ian, experienced paddles up paddler, knows most of these uh, obstacles, but taking his time there, he knows that he has to get his paddles out safely to carry on. Now he's moving across, back in, out of the eddy, which is the slack, into the fast-flowing water, does a spin on that gate very nicely indeed there, to the target, does that, no problem at all, Wiley moving down, he's one of my favourites for this event. Wasting no energy there, very, very controlled as he goes down, through the gate again, very clearly covering the course. The next section is the roll, it's the Eskimo roll, there he goes, round and up, straight through, we're running on 49 seconds at the moment, which is a good time so far. Yeah, he's doing very well indeed, you can see the concentration on his face as he comes down. He should lean forward on the first one, lean backwards on the second one. Whether or not he'll decide to do that, that's what the others have. Very nicely indeed. Now, how high can Ian get into this breakout? Quite low, but he's got to drive up now, hit the bell. Oh, he's hesitant. Oh, he's oh, missed, missed it. it first time. After such a good start, it all went badly wrong. Ian Wiley from Ireland finished with 2.07.43. Representing Great Britain, it is the current British champion, Gareth Marriott, age 21, hoping to go to uh, Nottingham Polytechnic to do business studies when time allows. But not at the moment, because he's doing a, a lot of canoeing. He's setting off well into the course, almost perhaps lost it there, John. Yeah, Gareth is the uh, first of the Canadian paddlers. He's kneeling in his boat using a single blade. And uh, regular viewers to Paddles Up will remember that Mark Delaney was tremendous last year, and Gareth is out to prove that the Canadians can get in, but he's having all sorts of problems here on a section of the course that should have been very simple for him. But he moves over, does a beautiful spin there, crossbow on, his on the front of his boat, hits the target, no problem at all now, but he's having slight problems with the front of his boat burying in that water. Of course, Gareth, uh, as he is uh, canoeing the Canadian style, he is a lot higher. Does that create problems? more advantage it's a big advantage in paddles up because he can get around all the uh, high obstacles they put in the way does a reverse roll there beautiful indeed now now this is where the kayaks can speed up faster than him because he's using his single blade but he's working very hard indeed and this is one of the obstacles that he can have problems with because he's so high out of his boat but i think gareth gold easily does that now and here we should see some wonderful paddling on this break oh and he's over he's capsized coming down up very fast indeed Will he, he'll get into the slack, he's got no problems getting back up there, he's working very fast. And there we are, hits the bell. Again, the same obstacle that caused problems on the last run. The second bell, we're down, we're going to pick up the coit now. No problems at all, he's back in his flow, I think. Yeah, he's put the coit in his mouth now, he's coming down. He won't be happy at all with the mistakes he's made higher up, but he'll keep going because anything can happen. Running time moment, 1.37, 2.00 to beat, which is forward. And remember, there's a second half of the heats as well yet to come in, so anything can happen in this competition, but uh, he's moving very well indeed now towards the bottom half of this course. Next bit is delivering the coit. He's got it in his teeth. He'll be coming up to the net just on the left-hand side, coming into the picture now. There it goes, very successfully. No problems, it seems, on that one. He turns round, round that red pole, going upstream, crosses to hit the ball. With his hand, fine. So there he goes, through the final gate, 2.04.85 the time, with no additional seconds for penalties. And we're sticking with Great Britain here now, a 24-year-old. His name is Ian Raspin. He was the 1989 Paddles Up champion. He's a supply te teacher in Nottingham, and he's setting off down the course now, over that first little fall, and onto the ball, which the balloon, which he hits, and going to the actual uh, life boy, the belt. Yeah, he paddles through there. Ian has actually done a lot of work with Paddles Up this year on designing some new obstacles and playing around with them, trying them out. So he's uh, fairly confident, hits the target no problem. And remember, he was the 89 winner, so uh, Ian's no uh, stranger to Paddles Up and uh, very experienced. But of course, the, the, uh, the course itself changes every year, new obstacles, new challenges, so even a, a, a paddler like Ian 
has got some new things to uh, get sorted out as he comes down the course. Rolling over there very successfully through the roll gate and the next bit's the, the fast bit of paddling down to the limbo. No problems at all. Straight under that one. The next one comes up and Ian's through that as well. Ready for the fall and the double bells. Yeah, broke out very high there, quite good indeed. Hits the first, but very high across, that's probably the best... Oh, and he's having trouble, but that was probably the best cut across there we've seen as he comes down to the coit. Made it and rescued it well, there's the coit. I would have thought the time is pretty good, John, at the moment. 1.15 we're running on at the moment as he goes into the chicane with the coit in his teeth. A little difficult there getting around that second pole. Yeah, a little problem, but uh, he's going very well, Ian, he's here, now he's... Uh, concentrating because it's quite hard obviously going around this chicane system carrying the coin and they've, they've used a lot of energy and they've had that roll gate so that's still in their mind now as he comes down has to take off the speed slightly because he's got to deposit the coin and then go over the fall for the left hand breakout the final bit see if he gets around that well yes he's going up to a little bit of time on that as he works around that red pole hits the ball yes no problems and on to the final gate and as ian works through that it's a time of one minute 50 96 with again no extra seconds for penalties well, we now have a new time to beat, 1 minute 50, 96, the time by Ian Raspin. But this is Sean Pearce, also from Great Britain, age 21. He's a former British champion, but uh, the current world champion, in fact, for men's kayak. So we're looking for a good run off Sean. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on Sean. He won the World Championships in 91, and he's, he's coping with it very, very well indeed. And he's coming down. He's an experienced guy again at Paddles Up. He's been in a few events and... Uh, passes his paddle through going quite well indeed and you've got to remember they haven't had a practice run on this course at all it, it's they saw the paddle go down and that's all they've had so it's very hard for them that really has been it and it's been uh, quite a job keeping the paddlers off it because they've really wanted to go down and uh, have a look at it there's going to be a few people in the Newbury area rooting for him he's a member of the Newbury Canoe Club uh, used to live there until 1990 there he goes under the roll Eskimo roll took a bit of time but came up no problems the bit as I mentioned earlier they always hate because they don't really like getting wet that's right, they don't really like to have to do a roll. If they do one, it's fair enough, but uh, he's coming down now. The Limbo's very experienced on these. Look at him, he's, he's taking it very cautiously. Now, can he get this move right? Because I think this is going to be the crunch move for this first half of the heat. One bell, no problem. Straight across the fast-moving water. Onto the second bell, that's good. He'll aim for a bit of speed now as he goes to pick up the coit. Yeah, he's doing a very good time here. 113, 140, 115. That's... Similar to Raspin, but I think uh, he hasn't used as much energy up on that area, so he's got a bit left in reserve now as he comes down. And I think we could see uh, someone taking the lead here. Sean looking quite good. He's moving, he's accelerating away now much faster as he moves down towards the uh, bottom bit. To deposit the coit, and we have 1.35 just coming up on the clock. He's uh, dodging around in the water there. They are deposited the coit, round going fairly tightly on that red pole, going to hit the ball, if he'll make that, he's doing very well. Yeah, 146 so far, he's coming up to the final gate, and we have it at 148.73, with no penalty points, taking him into the lead. And final paddler on uh, this heat one is Mark Vicenti, age 17, he's a student in administration in Catalonia, in Spain. Turning round now into that first gate, Oh, he's hit the first gate. What a bad start. Never mind. See if he can pick up as he comes to hitting the balloon down that little fall. Hit the balloon. No problem. Onto the life belt. You'll notice he's another Canadian style paddler, so he's sitting up in the canoe. He's got a little tangled up in the bank there. Uh, he's moved out. No problems. The, the paddle goes through, and so at least there's two obstacles successfully completed. Yeah, he's moving across quite well. He's, he's a young boy. Oh, and he clipped that gate, trying to do it too fast, but. The young lad, but he's uh, he's doing very well indeed. He's missed that target. He knows he can't get across for it, so he's missed the target. He's collecting penalties, but he's moving down the course, coming down through the downstream gate, coming down to the roll area, and uh, he's gone slightly too far over to the right, but he's worked out tactically. He thinks that's a faster route, and this is the thing with the paddlers. They'll all walk the course and look. He's not really picked up the speed that perhaps he would have hoped, but there he is coming down a uh, beautiful speed there as he comes through this lovely North Wales countryside. The River Truerin, not that far from uh, Bala. See a nice bit of countryside there. Goes under the limbo, the first one, under the second. No problems through that. Yeah, he's coming to the breakout now. Oh, and he's had problems there as well. These C1 paddlers seem to be having problems there. It's, it, I thought it'd be no problem to him at all, these bells, but we saw... Uh, Oh, and he hit that well. We saw the kayaks handling it much, much better. Yeah, than he's, the... he's gone out again. It really is the speed of the water coming over that fall. Yeah. As he has to break out into the side, yeah. Yeah, hit both the bells now. Gets the coit. 
shouldn't have problems with this. Puts it on his wrist, in fact. That's quite a clever idea by C1 Piper. Yeah, we haven't seen that one before. And the chicane itself, of course, worth mentioning here, is that the sh chicane, in fact, goes across the flow of the river. So it's not just a case of sailing through. You are doing a little bit of battling against the direction the water is, is coming in. But when he gets through that, which he should do... Oh, he's hit one there. There's another another five seconds on his time, which is unfortunate, because his time isn't really doing too, too well at the moment. Next bit is just to uh, deposit the coit in the net on the left-hand side of the river, just coming into screen there, and there he goes. Going down backwards down there, I don't know if that's intentional. I don't think it was. He's having a real battle to get round that pole. It, but he's, he's a long way down now. Yeah, he got caught in the stopper wave, the wave turning back on itself there, and had no way out of it. But uh, coming across now, hitting the bell and heading for the finish. Managed that successfully as he goes through the finishing gate, a time of 2 minutes 26.30, with 20 additional points for penalties. So at the end of the first half of Heat 1, we have Sean Pearce from Great Britain in the lead with 148.73. Just after him, Ian Raspin, also Great Britain, 150.96. From Canada, David Ford with two minutes and three hundredths of a second. Gareth Marriott from Great Britain is fourth. Ian Wiley from Ireland, Manuel Brissot from France, and trailing at the moment, Mark Vicenti from Spain. Well, we now go to the second half of the Heat. It's a new course. Mark Vicenti, Manuel Brissot and Ian Wiley have already run down it, so we join us, Gareth Marriott sets off down the river. 21-year-old Gareth with a time of 2 minutes 4.85 so far, 16 seconds behind the heat leader, Sean Pierce, and a chance to see what this second half of the heat actually looks like. John Gosling, what are the first obstacles they face? Well, he's already hit a target, a square disc, and now he's had to go round a 363, round another one, so he's fighting the water all the time. Working downstream now, he's got a breakout, and there's a ball in a... a a holder for him, he's put it in on his spray deck. Oh, and, and he's he almost he, lost it. Will he's he almost up? lost it. Marriott is in trouble here. Can he flick it over? No, he's in trouble. And I think Marriott is picking penalties up and won't be pleased there. He Silly mistakes by Gareth. Look at him, he's annoyed with himself as he moves down. He's done all that, hit all those obstacles there. Now he has to pirouette the boat and he should hit this. Pirouettes around to hit the ball. Oh, and he's making a right hash of this. And of course, it's the front of the boat is the is the idea for hitting that uh, hanging ball. But he's missed that as well. Powering down now towards uh, a red and white pole, which he'll have to negotiate upstream. So there he is, turning round and, and pushing hard upstream. If this looks different, it is because it is a different part of the river, different obstacles all the way down. Balloons need to be burst. He's missed one, so there's a five-second penalty there. Yeah, now he's going through a gate and down to the tunnel, which is the last but one obstacle, and he's got 3.56.15 to beat, and he's, he's having all sorts of trouble here. And the final bit of this particular half of the heat, a favourite with many viewers of Battles Up, not sure necessarily with the canoes, and there it goes, 3.30.94 the time, add on 25 seconds for penalties, and it's 3.55.94, a new lead. 24-year-old David Ford from Canada, the marketing director of a computer firm, hits very successfully that first obstacle, the yellow square. Gone a little further down than probably he'd have hoped for the gate, but he's made it back up. He's going across, across that enormously powerful water coming down the fall. Again, going round in the figure of eight rounds, that pole as well, down the central flow of the river to pick up the ball, out of the net, see how he manages that. Yeah, he's in the eddy there, the slack water, picked it up very well indeed on his spray deck as he covers across, which keeps the water out of his boat. Oh, and he's dropped it as he got over, but no real problems. Oh, he's, he's having a few now. He's got it in there, so he hasn't collected any penalties for that, and now he's going to go back into the driving water after hit this boy there, the high one. And this really is quite a drop now, isn't it? As he goes down the bridge, it's an enormous drop. The water picks up speed, something tremendous. It's incredible there. Hits the two, the two balls. Let's see now if he can get this pirouette. We haven't seen anyone hit it yet, so he comes now, turns. Oh, and so close, but that doesn't count if he hits it with his paddle. No, not the helmet or the paddle, it has to be the boat itself. So down the river a little further, in a moment he'll have the balloons, but first of all, turning round the pole, and the time at the moment, 3.10 he's on, he's got to beat 3.55. He's doing very well, though, I mean, uh, although he's picked up some penalties, he's got rid of both balloons, so that's quite good now. He's got this green gate just to position him up, and now he's got the, the tunnel. And if he man... Oh, he's gone out, he's, he's hit two, he's hit three, he's hit four. That is not good, that is a real shame. David Ford will be disappointed about that. If he can get the paddle up, at least he'll have finished it successfully at 3.34.51 with 30 seconds as penalty points. 
So from Nottingham, 24-year-old Ian Raspin, a member of the Tees Kayak Club in the northeast, hits the first obstacle, the board, very successfully, swings round with tremendous power, going up, doing the figure of eight. So it's first of all round the, the red and white pole, which we saw on the left there, round this one, round the top of it, and then heading down the river. Yeah, Ian knows that the time of 3.55.94 is the one to beat, because two people going into the final means that there's only one paddle after him, so he needs to do that to get into the final and then worry about it. But he'll be trying to win the heat, trying to beat Sean Pierce. He's come across very nicely indeed there, get rid of the ball, so he's doing very well. He's moving on now back into this fast-flowing water, and uh, he'll have the pirouette gate in his mind, even though he's approaching these. Oh, he's missed the ball altogether. That's a shame, but uh, I'd imagine, John, as they come over that deep drop, it's, it's very much controlling the boat that's, uh, that's foremost in their minds. It certainly is. I wouldn't want to let go of all push paddles in the air, but now he comes round to this pirouette. He's slowing up. He's, oh, and he's missed it as well, so he's got picked up 10 seconds. He's going to have to get a move on to make sure he qualifies. Well, I wonder if we're going to see anybody hit that ball. Early days yet, we'll, uh, we'll watch closely on that one. That is going to be an interesting one where that first person manages to get it. We have another red and white gate. Round we go, making sure, uh, Ian, making sure there he doesn't get involved and caught up in the rocks. One balloon, two, <laughs> one just won't burst. That's right, that's 15 seconds worth of penalties. He can't afford to hit any of this tunnel because if he hits that, he's not going to qualify for the final. 55.94 is what he's got to beat. So watching carefully, he goes down that tunnel. He seems to have made it right the way through. He's very close on time now. Let's watch as he puts the paddle over the top of the sign with a time of 3.27.56 and 15 seconds as penalty points. It's a new lead. Sean Pierce, 21 years old, another British paddler, led the first half of the heat, hits the first board successfully and goes round for that first pole. The little figure of eight they have to do, cutting back across the River Truerin and round in the opposite direction, still going upstream, trying to make it round the pole without hitting it. If they hit either pole, it's an extra five seconds, but Sean has managed it successfully. Yeah, the difficult part on this is this. He, he, he needs to collect this ball and make sure he gets across OK because he needs a reasonably clear run to make sure. And he's lost the ball, but he's, he's got it back. No, he hasn't got it back, so he's picked up penalties now. He's in real trouble, and he's hit that. He's got 10 seconds worth of penalties as he goes over the fall. That has really disorientated him. I was going to say, John, it really does seem when you've lost that ball, that's it, because the water is going so fast there that if you lose grip of the ball, very little chance of getting it back. Hits those two balls, suspended in the air, so that's good news for him. No penalty points on that one. Round for the pirouette. Nobody's done it yet. What are we going to get here? No, missed it as well. What a shame for Sean Pierce. More penalty points picked up. Yeah, so he's running with something like 15 penalty points, and he's, he's got to have it in his mind that he wants to qualify for the final. Sean could still win this heat, let's, let's put it that way, but uh, he's round there now, he really needs to get both these balloons and he might waste time trying to do it, but he knows he can't afford more penalties. Let's take a look at the time, 3.05 is what he's running on at the moment, 3.42 to beat, remember he was the leader in the uh, first half of the heat and now finally into the tunnel, hoping not to hit anything, getting his whole body, canoe, paddles and everything through. He's managed it, up goes the paddle over the top, we're talking about it. Oh, he's, he's hit the banner, that is a great shape, 3.19.97, add on 20 seconds penalty points, but he has still won the heat. So final confirmation there of the winner of the heat, it is indeed Sean Pierce from Great Britain, 3.39.97 his time, followed by Ian Raspin, also Great Britain, 3.42.56, and of course those are the two who will go into the final, following closely on, but unfortunately not close enough, Gareth Marriott from Great Britain, 3.55.94, Ian Wiley from Ireland, 3.56.15, David Ford, Canada, 4.04.51, Manuel Brissot from France, 4.06.35, and Marc Vicente from Spain at 5.20.27. So, day one of Paddles Up, and we've seen some tremendous runs. We already know who two of the paddlers are who will be in the Norwich Union Paddles Up Trophy final. They're both British, Ian Raspin and Sean Pierce. Join us again for the women's heat. And you can see that heat tomorrow morning at the same time. Welcome back to Paddles Up, the BBC's international canoeing competition. Coming from North Wales, not far from Bala, the River Truerin. It's heat two today, and we're going to be taking a look at how the women go down the course. John Gosling is with me once more. 
In the last programme, we saw some tremendous runs down the river. Are we going to see the same quality, do you think, today? Oh, by far, yes. The field is tremendous. We have Lisa Mittler from Germany. She's the individual world champion. We have Miriam Jerusalami from France, who is the World Cup champion. We have our own Maria Francis representing Wales here. She's the Welsh champion. It's a fantastic field. And, of course, the women will be competing with everyone in the finals, well, those who make it through. That's right. The two ladies will go and compete against the men, and uh, it's going to be fantastic. So let's take a look at the lineup for Heat 2 of the Norwich Union Paddles Up Trophy. First in the lineup, Dezintra Bloomer, senior coach of the Latvian team and the Latvian women's champion, making her debut at Paddles Up. From Prague in Czechoslovakia, Zdenka Grossmanová, silver medalist from the Pre Olympics, another newcomer to Paddles Up. Cordula Striepecker from Germany, a bronze medalist from the last World Championships and a gold from the Pre-Olympics. Maria Francis from Wales, so battling it out on home territory, a former British champion and current Welsh champion. From Canada, 21-year-old physical education student Margaret Langford, one of the top ten in the world and in the Canadian Olympic squad. Miriam Gerisalmi from France, the French champion and the current World Cup champion, something she's been for the past three years. And finally in Heat 2, Lisa Mikkeler from Augsburg in Germany, the current women's world champion and a bronze medalist from the Pre-Olympics. So we start off today's paddling with Dezitra Bloomer. She's from Latvia. She's the senior coach of the Latvian team. And she also makes slalom canoes and paddles, another uh, of her activities. First time in Paddles Up, and she's hit the gate first off, so not a good start today. But uh, I'm sure she can pick up as she goes down to that first fall. Fairly easy one there, goes to the balloon, hits that, no problems. And, John, it's the life belt next. Yeah, that's right, she's got to pass a paddle through this tube here, and she's gone slightly too low. First time she's done Paddles Up, so this is a strange manoeuvre to her. She's having to fight her way upstream, having all sorts of problems here. She's, uh, she's, because she's dropped down below into the eddy, which is the slack water, she's got to fight her way back up this fast-flowing water, and she's having all sorts of problems. And those problems, unfortunately, continued down the course. Dezintra Bloomer ended up with a total time of 2 minutes 58.12. Zdenka Grossmanovar, age 25, from Czechoslovakia. She's a silver medalist from the Pre-Olympics, another newcomer to paddles up she goes through that first gate and hopefully we'll have a chance to see the whole course on this one she comes down to the first main obstacle which is the balloon and John no problems on that no problems at all now she's driving across to passing a paddle through which is a strange thing but she's done a very high breakout very well indeed there to get there she's gonna pass her paddles through oh she's got a bit of a problem because it's high for her she's such a small girl but uh, now she drives back into the fast flowing water for the other downstream gate she should do a spin here cuts across, then do forwards or backwards, you see she does the spin move where puts the back of the boat through first. She's cut across because she's drifting downstream, so she's having some problems. The thing is with the girls, it's very hard for the girls because they're obviously not as powerful as the men, but uh, they go for it. Oh, and oh, unlucky. missed it, missed it. You probably saw her looking up there for the yellow board. She seems to have missed that. Judges will confirm that, but she's heading off knowing that if that is the case, it's an extra five seconds on her time. Coming down now to the roll through a bit of fast water. She's taken it on the left-hand side and she's going to uh, sorting herself out well, going under and back up again. She hasn't hit the gate, so no problems there. The limbo is coming up. That's right, there's two limbo gates coming up for them now. She's sprinting down. Beautiful setting here on the uh, River Tuerren as she comes down towards the limbo. Under the first one, leans forward. She'll probably lean backwards on the second. Yeah, backwards on the second before she goes for the double bells. Sort of backwards and sideways on that. Now, the bells, we saw problems in uh, the first programme on this. She's hit that bell. She's in the, the slow water at the moment, moving across, and we'll see if she gets dragged down. Now, she's pulling herself back, ready for that second bell. Will she manage it successfully? Yep, there we are. No problems. Tremendous there. Now, she comes down for the kite, takes the kite there, puts it in her teeth, and she comes to the chicane section, where she has to zigzag through these six poles and uh, although they make it look simple, these paddlers, this is a very difficult manoeuvre because the water's flowing quite fast and it's angled. And many of them, in fact, John, are, are working down sideways. Is that just the angle they end up at or is that a deliberate manoeuvre? It's a deliberate manoeuvre, really. They can't go straight at it because the water's flowing too fast. So sideways, they can control the boat better and uh, know where they're going. So she's now coming down to deposit the coit in the net there 
and over the fall for this 360 degree pole. Nearly got tangled up in the net herself, but successfully managed that. Rounds the red pole, which signifies, oh, she touched it. There's another five seconds going to be on that, but she hit the ball. She's coming through to the final gate. That's the final line. It's a time of 2.24.51 with 10 seconds extra for penalties. So, Cordula Striepecker, age 28, from Germany, with a new time to beat. Uh, she trains twice a day on flat water, so this is a little different, though, of course, a lot of experience around the world on various running waters and uh, white waters. Coming down through that first fall and onto the balloon. Yes, I, I, it's her first paddles up, but I'm not, I don't think she'll have too many problems, and I'll probably just have done the kiss of death for her, but uh, she's there passing the paddle through. Oh, she's... Oh, she oh, very let go neat, the... very neat. Caught it as it came over the other side. That's right, yeah. She's taking it fairly carefully, and I think she'll have uh, gained experience from just quickly looking at the others doing this top half of the course. She's had a problem cutting across, but she's she's taking it steady. They know the name of the game, it's to keep it clean. She's got the target, so she's not picking up penalties. She's moving down very nicely indeed. Concentration on the face is tremendous there. They hit that board very successfully, going down through another gate, and now it's the little fast section that takes uh, them into the... Eskimo roll, the bit they don't like because they get wet and after all the aim of canoeing and paddling is not actually to get wet if you can possibly avoid it. That's right, they don't like to capsize, they, you know, if they capsize in a normal slalom race it means that they're, they're probably out of the running and here we are in paddles up, we tell them they've got to do an Eskimo roll but she comes down now to the limbos, leans forward, she should lean backwards on this next one to get the positioning right, does it very nicely indeed, now she needs to drive out of this fast flowing water into the eddy there, the slack. A cordula Striebecker, steady, but perhaps a little too steady, finishing up at the end with a time of 2 minutes 35.48. We're looking now at the current Welsh champion, age 22, Maria Francis, who comes from Wales. She actually makes fine bone china cups in Stafford. Going through that first gate now, the green poles mean you go downstream through them, the red poles mean you come upstream round them. Hitting the balloon, we haven't seen uh, problems really with the balloon yet, so it's a good obstacle to start off with. Gets the confidence, oh dear! Oh, she's, she's really got caught in the bank there, nearly went over. Will she get out of that? Yeah, she, what she did, she came too fast at the target and just hit this little stopper there, the wave turning back on itself, so she's going to have real problems getting upstream now to try and get to that. I can't see how she can do it. She's She's going to collect a lot of penalty points and waste a lot of time here. Well, far too much time was lost there. Maria Francis ended with an unfortunate 2 minutes 41.04. Now, a competitor from Canada, 21-year-old Margaret Langford. She's a student in physical education and sports psychology at the University of British Columbia. She's actually taken a year out to train for canoeing through that first gate. I think she nearly got it with a paddle, but managed it quite successfully anyway. Yeah, she's... Uh... The Canadian team have actually employed a full-time coach, and it's a guy called Mike Drews, who was one of the British uh, second-string coaches for men's kayak. And Mike's over there doing a lot of work with them, but she's having problems here because she went for it too fast. A little detour into the bank cost Margaret Langford a little too many seconds, ending with 2 minutes 58.07. Another competitor involved in physical education, this time as a teacher, it's Miriam Gerislami, age 30, from France. She is the French champion and the current World Cup champion, and I think we're going to look for a very good time on this one. We should do indeed. The World Cup is a series of five races, so it's a best overall through a season, and uh, Miriam is certainly one of the best lady paddlers in the world. She comes here now to pass the paddle through. She's got a slight problem. She's panicking a bit, but she's sorted herself out now. She'll spin the boat now, she's got to cut her back across and she's quite entitled to do it backwards. In fact, that is a very impressive move from Miriam. Driving now across towards this target, which she's, she's gone too far down, she seemed to have a problem. I think she thought a spray deck had come off there. She missed the target, but uh, she's carrying on down now. And certainly paddling with uh, such style as she heads down for the roll, has to go under this, turn over, and of course, not hit the actual obstacle either. Going down now for the limbo. Yeah, she's uh, she took that very steadily indeed, and you can see now, she'll be paddling to try and keep this course clean. She's she's picked up a penalty, but uh, she's there now, still blowing and puffing from the uh, from the roll gate, but now she should break high into here, I would say, Miriam. Very good breakout indeed. Look at the height on that. It's tremendous to watch this stuff, because for paddlers normally, this kind of obstacle race is not what they're used to, but Miriam's managing very well, as, let's face it, uh, all the competitors have different... Uh, problems at different points to be honest two bells both hit going down for the coit now got the kite put it in a tee very good run here 129 130 as she's coming down now she's just getting a boat set up to do this this 
chicane and oh she's clipped a gate there and she didn't push it hard enough that she won't be pleased with herself that she's hitting poles because they accept sometimes they get penalties on the odd things but where there's poles involved that's normal slalom technique and she won't be happy at all as but she moves on down the sort of thing which you'd really hope to to line up at the beginning and go straight through with uh, no problems but anyway we're past that now and i'm sure she's thinking about depositing that coit we haven't had oh I'm going to say we haven't had any problems there, but the coit was missed the net, so we'll have more penalties there around that final pole, the red and white pole. She's not doing well on that. This is a great shame, a great shame. She's, I think she's probably just going to head to the end. Yep, 2.11.18 the time, an extra 25 seconds for penalties. The last in the women's heat, uh, well, at least heat one, it's Lisa Mikkela, age 25, from Germany. She's a medical assistant from uh, Augsburg, where, well, in fact, the Olympic Games, well, the last slalom in the Olympic Games was back in 1972. So a bit of history here on the paddles, of course, as she goes to the first main obstacle, which is the blue. No problems with that. And over to the life belt. Seems a little far downstream. Yeah, she put, she just put the power on as she was coming down to it. The, 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 the problem for the girls is they're so little that uh, they, they have problems there, but she didn't seem to have any. She's slightly disorientated. She's going to have to drive back over now into this fast-flowing water to a gate. And... Uh, She's done that very well indeed. Now, if she can get this target, Lisa is doing very... Oh, and she's unfortunate. She's missed the target. She tried very hard indeed. And you can see the determination on her face as she comes down. It's fantastic. And if you're wondering about the name, Lisa Mikkela, well, her brother, Peter Mikkela, one of the world's uh, best paddlers, really, until 1987, and she says she picked up all her tips from him. Over she goes. No problems at all with that. We haven't actually had any problems either on the first programme or today, have we, with that uh, that role so far? We would hope that they, all the paddlers could do it, but uh, she's moving down. As you say, uh, her brother Peter helped her a lot in her early days of training, and now uh, her fiancé, Melvin Jones... Oh, she's, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, she's hit that edge there. She's lucky to still have the front end on a boat. And it seemed like missed the limbo gate as well. Judges will no doubt confirm that, but that was nasty. Yeah, she, just when it was all going smooth for her, she had a major problem, but uh, does that now. She's, she's a bit disorientated. As you can see, she, she came low there. Got caught again on that fast water, but hit the bell. No great problems hitting the bells, just a little far downstream. Going to pick up the coit now. It's, it's, it's going to be a, a teeth manoeuvre on this one, holding it with the teeth, which, of course, leaves both hands free for as much power as she can. Going into that chicane. The chicane, of course, going across uh, the river just ever so slightly, so you really do have to power that boat round the gates. She's done very well on that chicane, better than most of the men we saw in the first heat. Uh, but this ladies' heat now... She's run into two minutes, she's got a few penalties, but she could take this first half of the ladies' heat here. We could be looking at a good time. Top time, 2.34.51, and she really is doing pretty well. To have got to this point, deposited the coin, no problems on that one for uh, Lisa. Oh, she's stuck in the stopper there, the wave turning on itself. She came over the fall sideways, so she's now having problems. She's going to have to drive up, and she's going to have to work to take this first half of the heat. You saw a quick view there of the final gate, the green and white one they have to go through. She's got around the red one, hit the ball, onto the final gate, and that makes a final time of 2.24.66 with 10 extra seconds for penalties. So, halfway through the women's heats, and look how close those two at the front are. Zdenka Grossmanova from Czechoslovakia, 2 minutes 34.51. Lisa Mikula from Germany, 2.34.66. And following on, Cordula Stripeka from Germany at 2.35.48. Miriam Jerusalmi from France, 2.36.18. And the final three for the moment, Maria Francis from Wales, Dezintra Bloomer from Latvia, and Margaret Langford from Canada. Well, on to the second half of this women's heat. Uh, Maria Francis, Dezintra Bloomer and Margaret at Langford have already gone down, so we join with Miriam Jerusalmi. So Miriam Jerusalmi, age 30 from France, uh, going into the second half of the heat. She's managed. She managed the first obstacle there and round the poles. Yeah, she hit the uh, yellow disc there as she came down. She's round the first 360-degree pole, coming across a bit low to go round the second, but it is a very hard manoeuvre. She's back into the fast-flowing water there from the eddy, the slack down through the fall there and then back into the slack now she has to get this ball and then get across the current with the ball now this is very hard for these girls to do she's taking it on she's holding it in her arm she's done very well indeed there to get across and put, puts the ball in there so she's doing very well indeed other than she's got a bit caught up bit of a wrestling match with the ball but managed it all the same the ball is successfully in the net now this bit is fast watch this as she comes down she tried for that blue hanging ball not quite sure whether she made it, the judges will confirm that. She's hit the red ball, the yellow one, no joy on that one, that's a shame. Yeah, Miriam there, she, she missed one out of the three, so now she's into the pirouette, dips the back end down, can't get it down far enough, that won't worry us, she'll keep going. So Miriam coming down now, 
three, three board, it's four, it's rolling on, but 5.19 to beat, but she's, she knows there's some fast paddlers to come yet. So down she comes, she has uh, a pole there, a red and white gate to negotiate, has to go upstream round it, and now it's the bit, the old favourite with many people, bursts in the balloon, she will get wet anyway if she's not careful, one goes and the other goes, she's managed them both. Tremendous, that is, but oh, she's missed that gate, she's got to get back upstream for it to, to get through that green gate she was so intent on the blues but she's through it now and then she has to spin to get into the tunnel now which can make or break this heat now there's a lot of penalty seconds can go on this if any of the poles are hit she's made it through the tunnel and up she comes to that final banner favorite with many viewers up goes the paddle over the top she's managed it 4 26 59 10 seconds on penalty points and into the lead so another new time to beat. This is Cordulus Striepecker from Germany, 28 years old. It's that first yellow square with no problems at all. Round the gate she goes, paddling upstream and across that very fast flowing water. And the danger here is that you really get dragged down too far, but I think she's going to manage it. She's maybe a little far down, but going to certainly maneuver around with no problems, not going to hit the pole. The next thing on the right-hand bank is a ball which she has to pick up and take across. That's right, and she's down here for it. Oh, and she's knocked it out too far, so uh, fortunately she's stayed in the slack in the eddy there. So she's got that on. Oh, and now this is a new technique. She's leaning forward hard on the ball, so she's keeping the boat moving all the time. Very impressive. That is very clever That's indeed. very interesting indeed. She's probably lost three or four seconds. Oh, that is a shame. After that, oh, she's managed it. She's still managed it. Lost three or four seconds trying to pick it up. Probably lost three or four trying to put it in the net. But the, the technique, John, of leaning down, it really meant she was able to give a bit of power to her strokes as she went across. That's right. She lost what she gained, but it was very clever indeed. She clips the blue ball now, comes down through the stop. A very impressive red, yellow. She's really going well now. Let's see if she can get this pirouette gate. So it's that stopper wave which can really catch the canoeists and really hold them when they're trying to get down. Now, this is interesting. The ball that they have to hit with the canoe still not managed it. So uh, Cordula Stripecker not managed that, but she's going down. Determination on her face. You can see the heavy breathing, hard work it's taking as she cuts into the water and works down to the next obstacle, which is uh, another red and white pole. And she has to negotiate upwards and then the balloons. That's right. She needs to get all of these because it's first two in the final. She's done one of the two balloons and uh, she's done, she's we've done now... them both. Done them both. That'll count for both. In fact, she's got them both off and the other one probably burst through the uh, the green gate very successfully and now the tunnel. The tunnel, yeah, a lot of points here if she's not careful. She's doing very well indeed. She could go into the lead. We're watching this very carefully. She's about eight seconds behind, not including penalties. We'll see what happens. Over the paddle goes. We have a time of 4.31.84. Five penalty points to add to that. Lisa Mikula, 25 years old, a medical assistant from Germany, paddling down. We should see a good performance off her in this second half of the heat for the women. She's managed that first obstacle. She's gone round the pole. She's doing very well. She's fighting that water as it comes over the fall with apparently no problems at all. Ended up maybe again a little far down. Quite hard to tell because the camera can make it look a lot further down than it is. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very hard. I mean, that water's flowing at one heck of a speed. As she comes down now to the ball, she's taken the ball out now what technique will she use she's just laid it on the front of the deck now concentrating you can see a grin on her face i think she's thinking i hope i can get across here this could be a dangerous maneuver because if that ball goes at this point there's no hope of getting it back she's made it through the most dangerous bit so if she drops it now there's hope but she gets it straight in the net that's very good indeed except she's got tangled up now she's pulling forward now this is going to be a difficult thing for Lisa, because she's got the blue this first one is very high she's had to let go i think she's missed that completely over into the stop, a tremendous mm. performance. Slightly there. disorientated there, I think, but she's made the yellow ball. Now just skirting around the edges, trying to come across. Yeah, they hit that oh. red. Yes, she's managed that. That's really good indeed. And that's Miriam's time, 4:36 on the left, that she needs to beat to get into the final. Let alone win the heat. Now she's. Oh, that was so close. That oh, so unlucky. Now she's moving down. Now the time in the top left is Miriam. She needs to beat that because there's one paddle after her. But uh, she'll be just working all the time now, knowing that she's got to get to the finish as clean as possible. Pushing hard and uh, breaking in the water, she goes round, round that pole. It's over for the balloons. She had no problem at all there. Lisa Michaela from uh, Germany. Well, oh, well, they will not break. Those balloons would not break. That is so unlucky. But that's the name of the game. She is also, it appears, she's missed the gate. She's hit one as well. She's going to have to go through it. Absolutely yep. has to go through it before she can get to the tunnel. So what was so clear, I thought, that she would qualify for the final now. It's drifting away from her. That is such a shame. Those two balloons she missed 
She got 10 seconds on that, she missed the gate, she's made it through the tunnel, but it doesn't look good at all. Lisa Michaela from Germany, up goes the paddle, and we have 4.46.63 with an additional 25 seconds as penalties. Zdenko Grossmanova, we're going to be watching this one very closely. From Czechoslovakia, 25 years old, she has a time of basically 4.36 to oh, beat. Oh, she's oh. just completely blown out. She's missed the right-hand breakout. And now she's in all sorts of trouble. What we thought was going to be incredibly un unable to beat her, and now she's suddenly blown it. There's only 0.25 separating first and second at the moment, and that is incredible power to get back there. Zdenka did the best run in the first half of the heat, and we were hoping for good things from her. We'll probably get good things, but that is such a shame. She's going to have lost so many seconds on that, when to actually get into the final, the timings are so close. We will see what happens. She seems to be uh, just about collecting herself now. Quite what she makes of uh, her performance so far, I don't know. She is fumbling. A paddle has just gone down the side of the boat. She nearly lost that altogether. But she's got the ball crossing over through that fast water. She's keeping it on the spray deck. One hand, one arm slightly on it. And dropping it in the net. She's managed that, pushes herself off the bank and down over the big fall under the bridge. She did that very well indeed. But I think it's nerves. We've seen it happen so often. Now she comes along, hits the first one there over considering the mistake she's made she's done an amazing job and there she's made another one there so she's wasting time here 436.59 is the time to beat to win this heat but 436.84 is the time to to get to get in the final so i'm not sure what what she's doing here next obstacle for her will be the pirouette whether she'll manage this she's gone straight past it what a shame Sedenka grossmanova carrying on down Hoping at least to pick up time, where she's obviously going to be losing in terms of penalty points. Remember, five seconds for every every missed obstacle, every hit obstacle. Yeah, she's she's. She, I think she's just that that first mistake. I don't know what she did. She just went out of her mind. She's not picked up any more penalties down here, but she's already got ten penalties, and now. I think she's just lost a chance of the final. Success on the balloons anyway, nearly lost a balance after that. Going through the tunnel, sort of backwards, sideways, forwards. She looks like she, yes, she's made it straight through that. Coming up to the final banner, ready to throw her paddle in the air. Over the paddles up, sign. And we have 4.44.70 with 10 penalty points. So the end of the women's heat, and we now know who's going into the final. Miriam Jeruslami from France, 4 minutes 36.59. And so close, Cordula Stripeka from Germany, 4.36.84. Uh, Zdenka Grossmanova, who we saw just now from Czechoslovakia, 4.54.70, just missed it. Lisa Michaela from Germany, 5.11.63. Dzintra Blumer from Latvia, 5.19.52. Margaret Langford from Canada, 5.29.55. And unfortunately for Maria Francis from Wales, disqualification because she missed a gate. Another great heat, and the two women, Miriam Jerusalmi and Cordula Stripeka, go into the final for the Norwich Union Paddles Up trophy. Join us again in the next programme. Once again, it's the turn of the men, including one of the greatest male paddlers, Richard Fox. And you can see the next round of the competition at the same time tomorrow. To North Wales for heat three of Paddles Up, the international canoeing competition where in the final we put men, women and the older juniors together as they go for the Norwich Union Paddles Up trophy. But today, heat three, it's another men's singles heat, so let's have a look at the lineup. And we start off heat three with the current men's champion in Latvia, 20-year-old Ivas Adux, a Canadian-style paddler who achieved first place in the Baltic Cup. Onto one of the top German paddlers, Martin Hemmer, a bronze medalist in the last World Championships with high hopes for the forthcoming Olympic Games. From Scotland, one of the top ten paddlers in the world, Mark Delaney. He's the Scottish champion and a bronze medalist in the World Championships. Melvin Jones, ranked number two in Great Britain and a member of the British slalom team, a regular competitor on Paddles Up. 
Flying the American flag in Paddles Up, 23-year-old Jed Prentice from Washington, D.C., one of the top paddlers in the world. Marian Strukel hails from Slovenia and will be in the Olympic team. He holds silver medals from both the World Championships and the Pre-Olympics. And on to the defending champion at Paddles Up, Michael Rice from Holland. At age 25, one of the top 10 men's kayak paddlers in the world. And finally in this heat, British champion Richard Fox also holds the title of World Cup champion 1991 and undoubtedly one of the very best paddlers there are. Getting heat three underway then today, the first paddler, Ivas Adux, he's age 20 from Latvia. He's actually just in the process of coming out of the Soviet army and uh, will shortly be making bobsleigh. Not a good start, unfortunate there. He's hit the first gate, the green and white one as he goes down. He's hit the balloon, but gone very downstream, I think. John Gosling, how's he looking so far? He's not doing too bad. He's a C1 paddler, so he's kneeling in his boat. He's got a lot more height. He shouldn't have problems on, on this passing the paddle through, which he has, and he's got to cut across. It's a new thing to him from Latvia, he hasn't done Paddles Up before, but they're learning about it over there and uh, this is the great thing about Paddles Up, paddlers go back around the world and develop it for everyone. He's come down so fast he's forgot about a target there, there's a yellow target he should have gone for, and uh, which wouldn't have been any problem to him as a C1 paddler, wouldn't have slowed him down or anything and he's missed it completely. The course perhaps proved a little too hard for Ivars Adox, he finished this section with a time of 2 minutes 41.74. This is one of the top German paddlers, Martin Hemmer, age 24. He works in sales in the steel industry when he's uh, not paddling, but he's on the course at the River Truerin now, hitting that balloon and heading over to the life belt, uh, getting a little caught in the, in the flow just below the falls there, but I think he'll manage that no problem. Yeah, straight through, turn round and down the river. Yeah, over to the gate now, you'll do a spin. Oh, he's, he's trying to forward move, which we saw Elizabeth, if you remember, in the ladies' seat. Hits the target, looking very well indeed as he comes down now. I mean, he's a very good paddler, Martin. He's, he's a, the aggression on his face. That uh, We had a paddler's dinner and he was there with a big grin, plate full of food and enjoyed himself. And uh, he eats a lot, he works hard and he plays hard. And when he's paddling, he, he flies along. And straight out of that roll, we saw John just a, a few moments ago going under that, that green gate. Uh, he just sort of just slid under it. What, what, have you got to get your whole body through, or what's the, what's the rule? Well, you, your shoulders and your head, basically, but uh, these boys know how to twist the rules to, to benefit themselves, really. And a very high break. Look at the breakout, the power he has to put on there. Hits the bell straight across. Can he keep it up? This is an incredible run from Hammer here. No problems at all as he goes down to pick up the coit. He's a man with determination, no doubt about that, I'm sure. He's got, a, <laughs> he's got to say, if he puts it in his, uh, in his mouth, he'll probably come out with teeth marks. He has such determination, but he's holding it in his, in his right hand, uh, ducking down to avoid those gates as he goes through the chicane. He's just about managed the final one. Yes, in fact, he's passed it. He's going now to deliver the coit. Did you see the, the, the look of determination on his face there? Yeah, he's out to get into the final, and... Uh... He's looking really good. I mean, he's paddling very well and controlling the boat. Can he look at the height on that breakout? This is going to be an incredible run. A 142 at the moment. We're beating 241. He's got no problems at all. He comes towards the end. It's 145.92 with no extra seconds for penalties. Some incredible canoeing we're seeing already. This is Mark Delaney. He's from Scotland, age 27. He is the Scottish champion. He's setting up tremendous power again, cana uh, canoeing Canadian style. So he's kneeling up. He's strapped into the canoe just on, on his legs, going down towards that first balloon, hitting that no problem, and over to the life belt. Yeah, you see the way he did that. He'd worked out that if he came down the river left, he could just touch it with his paddle. So he's doing very well indeed here, Delaney. Just a very simple curve there to get to those obstacles. Went through that gate backwards, just trying to steady himself a little bit. I suppose that's one of the problems with actually being high. Yeah, he missed the target there because he got caught up in the stopper, so uh, he won't be pleased. Well, Mark Delaney, the Scottish champion, won't have been pleased with his final time either, totalling 2 minutes 20.32 seconds. Representing Great Britain, Melvin Jones, age 27, full-time canoer. He also uh, works for various canoe companies as well. Lives in Nottingham, used in fact to live in the West Midlands. and made a perfectly good start there, no problems at all. Going through that first green gate, going downstream. Hits the balloon, across to the life belt, the paddle is through. This is all very, very straightforward for him. He's managing this very well. Uh, through, the, through the gate they are, through the gate, and then up for the yellow board, and he hits that as well, so no problems at all so far. Yeah, looking very uh, good here, Melvin is, as he comes down. He shouldn't have any problems going through that gate, and uh, it's just the approach they take over. They've kept river left on this, so I thought they might try and go river right, but they've decided to take it that way. 
and Melvin looking very good. 40 seconds and out, up and out of the roll so game. very fast. So important there, John, to avoid that fast bit as you're going towards the, the actual roll point? Well, yeah, they, what they've done, they've, they've taken the option of going slower towards the roll gate so they get a better roll and they can be up faster, but he's through those limbos. Now, how high can Jones break? Very high indeed. Perhaps not as high as Martin did earlier, but he's in and out and very fast indeed. It's two bells set one minute, three seconds through the bridge. Going very well. Got the kite now. He'll be putting on the speed here for this chicane section. Melvin Jones will have high hopes for paddles up because he's been in every single paddles up. He hasn't won yet, but he's uh, another man of determination. He'll be pushing hard to try to get to a, a leading position. 121 so far, made it through the chicane, and the next job is to drop that coit in the net. That's right, yeah. Ranked two in Britain. Fox took the title uh, in 91, and uh, he's there. Can he break high on this red and white pole? Very high indeed now. He's just got to drive up. This is a very good time. Good power there as he comes across, hits that ball. He's making it for the, the final gate. His time as he goes through is 1.42.8 with no extra seconds for penalties. A new time for our next paddler then to beat. This is Jed Prentice, age 23, who's come across from the USA. Another Canadian-style paddler, and that means he's kneeling up in the boat. Ooh, a little risky as he went through that gate, but managed it successfully. Kneeling up in the boat with one paddle. It means getting to the obstacles, like he did there, is a little easier, because he's a little higher in the boat. He'll, with a bit of luck, just throw that paddle through, just pass it through, no problems at all. There we are, Jed Prentice doing very well there. Next, it is a green and white gate, which means he has to approach in the downstream direction. He's going backwards through it, that's no problem as long as he gets through it, which he just about did. He's doing very well, he's got all the obstacles, and I think here the uh, C1 paddlers are passing information to each other about how to do this course because they want to beat the uh, kayaks, and I'm sure that's happening because uh, he approached that slightly different to Delaney, and I, I'd have thought he'd have done it in exactly the same way, but he went through the driving water there towards the roll gate, does his reverse, spins over, throws himself backwards, up very quickly, shakes his head. Jeddy's a fantastic C1 paddler, he's, He's been dominated in America by people like John Ludville for years, and uh, now he's in his own right, he's one of the leading paddlers in the world, and coming down here looking very impressive. But really, for the last 12 years or so, it really has been the Americans that have led the, uh, the Canadian-style paddling. So, uh, Jed should be doing well. He goes up, hits that bell, no problems at all. Very stylish, straight across. He's managed not to get dragged downstream. The second bell, remembering, of course, that this is not the normal kind of uh, feat which uh, a paddler has to do. Oh, he's dropped the coit. The coit has gone. It's in the water somewhere. He's going down for it. Has he found it? He has. It's in his teeth. He's turned around. He actually found that coit on the river bank. That's amazing because obviously then he wouldn't have been able to deposit it either if he hadn't got it. So through the chicane we go. He's managing that very well. Just neatly flicking his hips as he goes through. Yeah, looking, looking really good. Determination on his face there. Fantastic camera position that is for the determination. He's coming down. He, he'll be going steady. He's, he's trying to do well. His, his running time's going on a bit, but uh, it's a very impressive run here from a C1 pilot. It's good to see. It's, he's, he's doing well. Unfortunately, he's not made the best time so far, but remember, there's uh, the second half of the heat still to come. They are. Hits that ball through the final gate with a time for Jed Prentice of 2.09.01 with no extra seconds for penalties. Marian Strukol getting ready to go there. He comes from Slovenia, 27 years old. Got a silver medal in the World Championship, which is, of course, held every two years. There goes first obstacle, he's through it. No problems at all. The balloon is next. Yeah, he comes down, hits that without any uh, problems, and he's high into that breakout to get his paddles through. Very fast, very nice indeed. He's just disorientated slightly now. He looks, drives back into this fast-flowing water, goes for the spin, always having to lean back. Very nice indeed now, down to the target. He's doing very well indeed here, Michael. Going down now for the, should be the roll next. No, nope, through the, through the, that's right, the the, uh, the green and white gate going downstream, and it's the roll next. I think you're just into this roll gate, you like to see I know, it I love it, I love it. I wait for it every time, because these paddlers have to get wet and they don't like it, and they complain afterwards, and we have big arguments, but never mind. Lovely view there of the River Truerin, the water coming down, lots of white water as it goes under the limbo, going forwards, and then probably, which way will go forwards, the second one, yeah, just nipping under that, no problems at all. Great break out there, very high indeed. Probably, oh, and he's hot, oh no, he's lost it a bit, but that's still a very impressive cross there. High cross across that stopper, coming down now to get the kite, takes it in one into the mouth, and now he's moving on. Great worry, I imagine, for the paddlers actually losing their balance altogether when they're reaching up with the paddles to hit boards, hit balloons, and so on. That's right, yeah. Alan Edge, who is the uh, Olympic coach for the British Slam team, does the course designs for these, and uh, 
he, he's, he's getting more and more daring as Paddles Up goes on and making them do tricks. Well, Marianne Strugel already knows he's in the Olympic team. Coming up to deliver that quoit. No problems there. Down the final fall, he's going to work round. He hasn't gone downstream any further than really he had to. Round that red and white gate, hits the ball through the final gate. We have a final time there of 1 minute 47.06 with no extra seconds for penalties. This paddler, age 25, from Holland, he's Michael Rice. He says he enjoys working with the British paddlers because they're good paddlers. So let's see how good he is. As he goes through that first gate, no problems at all on that, but the problems can arise a little lower down. He's hit the balloon. We seem to be managing to do that one fairly successfully. Straight through, very fast, very fast indeed through that life belt. He didn't lose his flow at all. He's coming across, powering across the river, going backwards through that next gate, and then it's up. He has to go for that yellow board. Very good, no problems at all yet. He certainly doesn't want to lose his Paddles Up uh, Championship that he won last year, and uh, he's gone through the green and white gate there now as he comes down to the roll gate. He's going very nicely indeed. He's, he's keeping it cool. They've got to be careful that they don't ease off too much to keep it clean and uh, let time run away, but 40 seconds through there, that was about the same time as Jones had gone through that roll gate, and his time's the one to beat, 142.8. Michael's under the first limbo, coming down to the second very easy this is the breakout this is where they've got to be high and he's low this is going to cost him time he's a man who certainly knows what paddles up needs but didn't manage that one quite as successfully again getting dragged down a little lower than i'm sure he would have hoped but he's when he's got to the bells he's hit them so he's now going to be powering down picking up that coit as fast as he can no delay there at all as he goes to the chicane coming across the river that coit in the left hand going through hoping not to hit any of those poles if he hits any of them it'll be five seconds on his time yeah, he's got, oh, and he's clipped the last, oh, the last but one pole there. He won't be happy at all. He he's, knows he's got to beat this time of Jones's, and there's a second half, yes, but uh, he's coming down. I mean, following him is Richard Fox, who uh, can be brilliant at paddles up, but uh, Michael comes down, does the breakout. He's very respectable on a running time here. Up to the ball, not bad at all. We have 1 minute 44.68 with five seconds for penalties. Now, if you want to see a classy run, watch this one. This is Richard Fox, age 31. He's already won paddles up several times. He is the current British champion, and I think he's going to do a tremendous run as we go down, hitting that first balloon, going across to the life belt. These are the things that Richard doesn't like to do, which is let go of his paddles. So these are the ones where he takes time. But uh, he's, he's very good. He's slalom technique. He's second to none in the world. He's brilliant. Look at the way he just flicks his head through, hits the board, coming down now. He's looking good. The determination, the fox eyes, the glare. It's uh, quite frightening. Look at that, how he grips his lips, his jaw. He's heading down like he's almost trying to streamline his face into the next obstacle. Turning sideways, but getting under, pulling up and uh, going through. He's one of our top athletes, helped by the uh, Sports Aid Foundation that helps uh, Britain's top athlete, so that shows you the kind of calibre we've got on Paddles Up with Richard Fox. Under that limbo going forwards, again, you can see he's making it, leaning backwards, pulling through, no problems at all. Round he goes, round for that bell. You're talking about a break out there. Smacks the bell, comes across, upstream, he'll do this one slowly. Now, I'm not sure he's very happy about this kite manoeuvre, but uh, he'll come down, take it. Oh, and he almost lost it there, but Fox now in his teeth. Now he could see teeth marks on the kite. I'm sure you can. I think there'll be a few teeth marks on that by now. Going round that chicane. Oh, 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 goodness me, Richard Fox. We think he made it. Judges will confirm that. But it looked all right as he went through. Past the final gate on the chicane and going to power down, ready to hit that, that net and drop the coit into it. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's eased off a bit too much. He won't be happy. He's got that five-second penalty. He's put the, the ball in there. He's over the four. But he's low there. He's going to have. He's not going to take the first half of the heat here. It's a shame. He'll be disappointed. Still time to catch up. But at the moment, his time as he finishes this bit is 1:48, uh, 62 with five seconds of penalties. So the end there of the first half of heat three. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. We have a whole minute separating from top to bottom. At the top, it's Melvin Jones from Great Britain with one minute 42:80. Martin Hemmer from Germany following on with 145.92. Marianne Strugel representing Slovenia, 147.06. From Holland, it's Michael Rice in fourth place, 149.68. And Richard Fox, a surprise in fifth place, Great Britain, 153.62. And the final placings for now, Jed Prentice from the USA, Mark Delaney from Scotland, and Ivars Adux from Latvia. So, on to the second half of the heat. Ivars Adux, Mark Delaney and Jed Prentice have done their runs, as has Richard Fox. Let's join with Michael Rice. 
Michael Rice from Holland heads into the second half of the heat. He said after the first half he didn't like the roll, didn't like having to do it deliberately. But no rolls in this one. Round the pole he goes, and he's heading upstream on both sides. Little figure of eight. Round he goes on this. He's clipping it very close, very nice indeed. No seconds lost there, and managed it very stylishly. You can see exactly where he was going. Now he's down for the ball, picking it up. And onto the spray deck as he goes across the river. Yeah, the outsider last year who won, Michael, the defending champion, coming down, being very cautious, and it's how fast they can get it in. He's done that very nicely indeed. And he's just got to try and keep it clean. He needs a clean run on this second half of this heat. Very neat move as he went across with that ball. He's hit the blue, the large suspended ball on the top, the yellow one. Very successful on that. Getting a little caught up in the side. We are getting a few paddlers caught up among those rocks, but he's made it out without too much trouble. The red ball's been hit, and now it's the move. Will he do it or not? Michael Rice from Holland pirouetting and hitting it. No, he doesn't. So close, those paddlers, they're so close, and they can see they won't mess around trying a second attempt. They've got to give it an attempt. But uh, anyone who hits it, I would think, are definitely in the final because they're, they're going to save themselves five seconds. Anyway, Michael's down here, round and coming across to the balloons, and uh, he's doing very nicely at the moment, other than the balloons aren't breaking. That is such a shame. That's the name of the game, but unfortunately, one of those balloons didn't burst. So there'll be five seconds on that. Through the gate he goes and into the tunnel. Yeah, coming down through the tunnel. He's got to put a bit of a spurt on. He's got some penalties, but he's moving very fast now. Let's look at that time. 3.43 to beat. He goes over the top. The paddle goes up. Oh, there it goes. 3.28 is the time and add on 10 seconds, so it's a new time. We're really looking now at those competitors who could well be in the paddles up final. This is Marian Strukel from Slovenia doing well. Round that pole. He's already made it through to the Olympic team, so you're looking at a man who knows what style is in a canoe and how to power that boat across the course. Going fairly close into that gate, so no worries there. Going down, ready to pick up the ball. Yeah, very powerful paddler, and uh, this is the, the difficult part for him because they're not used to this, and they're all trying to think of ways, and uh, this is quite good now. He's, he needs to get across, not waste too much time. Did that very nicely indeed, and get rid of the ball as quickly as possible. Just slowed down there slightly in the middle, but made it very successfully. I doubt any seconds really been lost there. Now, this is quite a drop for anyone. He has to hit the ball and hope that he can control the canoe at the same time. He's managed it. The canoe seems to be going over sideways a little bit. He, he, he's, he's going for the red one first and then the yellow one. That was very deft, very deft. That's very good indeed. And now he's 3.48, so uh, that time up on the left is the one to beat to help himself. And he's missed the ball, so he's going to have to move on now because the boys behind him were feeling very confident they could hit this ball, so uh, he's moving down now, Marion, to the right-hand breakout, and uh, he can't afford any more penalties. The pirouette that nobody has hit yet, I suppose it's true to say that if absolutely nobody hits it, then they'll all have five penalty points for it, so it'll even itself out, but if somebody hits it, then uh, that'll really take them into the lead. Two balloons gone, that's good news. A lot of people have uh, missed those or had unfortunate incidents with the balloons. Through the gate, backwards he goes, and into the tunnel. He's wasting time now, though. He's, he's lost some time on this bottom half, so he's moving down. We have to Gonna move on. And as he comes up to the end, over goes the paddle. 3.29.25. Add on five seconds for penalties. It's the new time to beat. Martin Hemmer from Germany came second in the first half of the heat. So we're looking for a good run off him. He's hit the yellow square with no problems at all. Very steadily going up. Making a lot of spray there. He's obviously going well upstream as he goes round that second pole. Yeah, Martin's a very, very good short-distance paddler, i.e. paddling for 60 seconds or so. And, uh, oh, he's, he's made a mistake there. <laughs> is, is he going to get that ball? He's got it. That is, that's incredible. Listen to the crowd on the bridge there. That's amazing. They didn't think he'd do it. I don't think any of us thought he'd do it. That was a tremendous piece of work that he did there now, and he hits that ball. He's doing very well in here, Martin. Over. Oh, he's, he's stuck in the stop of the wave there, holding him in. He cannot he's... pull himself out. He's battling furiously. He's been pulled under. He'll, he'll jump out. He's out, but he's slightly disoriented. He can see that red ball. He can see the yellow ball. He's hit them both. He's having an amazing run. Powerful considering... paddle. Powerful paddle. I've got to say, considering the... Uh... Oh, he has missed that. That is a shame. He was meant to hit the ball with the canoe. He got up. He got the height. He just didn't quite get it in the right place. So he's coming down now. He's got the breakout to do and then get across. He needs to get both these balloons because he's already running down with something like 10 seconds of penalties, apparently, so 
There he goes, no problem at all as he turns for the green gate, his back end's caught slightly. Little trouble turning, but he made both the balloons, he avoided the rocks, he's into the tunnel, he can go down 3.34.25 to beat, he's on 3.17, this is looking very good indeed. He goes up to the final banner, up goes the paddle, the time 3.23 with 15 seconds to add for penalties and just behind the lead position. The British number two, Melvin Jones, and as far as we're concerned, well, he was first in the first half of the heat. Let's see if he can maintain that position. No problems at the beginning, round that first pole and crossing the river. Yeah, Melvin really wants to get in to the final of paddles up, and uh, he's just got to keep his head. But uh, we've seen it happen so many times where paddlers take it too cautiously uh, in the second half, and they, uh, they blow it. So Melvin now playing around with the ball, he's already having problems. Hanging on to it on the spray deck, keeping it down with his chest. As I mentioned earlier, he's been every, he's been in every single paddles up and not one yet. But looking good for the final. If he can keep this going, if he can get that ball in, not lose his paddle, push off from the side, go under the bridge and down the fall, and he's looking good. Yeah, he's got to hit this blue. Oh, he's hit the blue one, no trouble. Now, if he could get the red on a on a move, he's in with a chance. Got the red, got the yellow over, back up. Now, now if he can get the pirouette. My money's on Melvin Jones to hit this pirouette. Very successful indeed. We will see. John Gosling's money is on Melvin Jones. We'll see whether he'll have any money left or not. No, he's missed it again. Oh, John. Yeah, look at Melvin. He's got a grin on his face there, and I think he's thinking, well, no one else got it, so... Well, it's either but... a grin or a grimace, I'm not sure. But he's yeah. powering down for that next pole. Round he goes, ignoring the rocks, keeping well out of their way. Over to the balloons, and let's face it, anything can happen here. One... Oh! up to the top and there it sits not burst therefore it's five seconds on that yeah he's got penalties so he's got to keep moving now 334 25 is the win leading time at the moment and 338 is the other qualifying time so jones has to get a move on 319 he's on at the moment up goes the paddle over the top it's a total of 321 93 add 10 seconds and he's won the heat so there we have it after two very successful runs. Melvin Jones, Great Britain in first place in this heat, 3.31.93, followed by Marianne Strugel from Slovenia at 3.34.25. Those are the two who will go into the final. Close behind them, well, Martin Hemmer from Germany, he came in at 3.38, just seconds afterwards. Michael Rice from Holland, 3.38.80, also doesn't make it to the final. Richard Fox from Great Britain, a surprise there, 3.43.68, he's out. Mark Delaney from Scotland, 4.19.17. Jed Prentice from the USA 429.53 and Ivas Adux from Latvia came in at 532.89. Well, the greatest surprise of them all today, Richard Fox is out of the Norwich Union Paddles Up trophy. But Melvin Jones keeps British hopes alive into the final. Join us next time when it'll be the turn of the juniors. Welcome once more to the River Truerin in North Wales for Heat 4 of Paddles Up. We have seen some amazing canoeing so far already. We've been through the men and the women's senior heats, and today it's the turn of the juniors. But don't forget that the winners of all the heats will go together in the final as they battle it out for the Norwich Union Paddles Up trophy. We have some fantastic talent in the junior section as well, so let's take a look at the heat and the lineup in detail. So we start with a competitor from Latvia, Aldis Klavinch, 16 years old and winner of the Junior Baltic Cup and already the Senior Men's Kayak Baltic Cup winner. Carrying Wales's hopes in the Junior Heat, Paul Ebry from Wrexham, the Junior Welsh Champion. Petra Plavjanikova has come over to Paddles Up from Czechoslovakia. She won a silver medal in the Junior Pre-World Championships. New to Paddles Up from Germany, Suzanne Hurt, 18 years old and already a member of the German Olympic squad. From Great Britain, Joel Scott won a silver medal in the Junior Pre-World Championships. He's also got his sights set on the Olympics. Wojtek Bares comes from Prague in Czechoslovakia. To his credit, a bronze medal in the Junior Pre-World Championships. The British junior champion, James Croft, one of the favourites for the Junior World Championships in 1992. 
And finally, Paul Ratcliffe, representing Great Britain, one of the top junior paddlers in the world, proving that by winning the Junior Pre-World Championships for 1991. Starting off the final heat from Latvia, it's Aldis Klavinch. He's age 16. He's been canoeing, in fact, for four years. It was his father, who also canoes, who introduced him to it. And doing very well. Already got the uh, Baltic Cup, the first in the Baltic Cup in the uh, junior section. Got through that first gate. It's the balloon is the next obstacle. And then crossing over, it is the life belt. The paddle has to go through the life belt, but he's a little close to the bank. He's going to be fighting to get out of that bank. And through the life belt, John, John Gosling, how are we doing? Very well indeed. Uh, it's new to paddles up and he's doing very well. He's done through the green and white poles there, which is a downstringer, and then immediately loses a stroke and the water's thrown him right the way down. So there's a target, a yellow target on the right he should have gone for, completely missed it. He's looking upset about that now. Uh, the obstacles actually went on to beat him. He ended up with a total time of three minutes, 19.76. The very first time in Paddles Up uh, from Wales, it's Paul Ebury, age 17, from Yale Sixth Form College in Wrexham, going through that first gate, heading down the, the small fall, which they have to uh, manage, first of all, onto the balloon, and then across the uh, direction of the river, across the flow of the river, into the bank. He's got 3.19.76 to beat, which shouldn't be a problem if he makes it down, but not doing too well at the moment, having problems getting that paddle through the life belt. Really, really, he must be absolutely cursing that life belt. He cannot get it through. He's got it through at last. John, next. I, I was stunned there because I just didn't believe what he was doing. I think he just had a mental block and just didn't know what to do. And uh, he, he, my money was sort of on Paul. Uh, he's a local lad and uh, he was quite determined. You see on his face, he just I think he's still thinking about that, that uh, tube there. And uh, he ought to get that out of his mind and get on with paddling the course now. He's coming down to the roll gate. He can still pull this out because anything can happen, he paddles up. It's been proven so many times, so he's very fast through the roll gate. He's lost a bit of time, but he needs to get a move on now through these limbos, which uh, shouldn't be any problem to him now as he comes down. Leans forward for the first one. Forward for the second one. Now, break high, Paul. Get in there. That's a good breakout. That's an excellent breakout now. As he comes up to the bell, hits the bell, cuts across. Excellent. That is as good as any senior paddler did it in the other heats. Great problem, I imagine, John, if you get caught in the, the flow of the river and get sent down a little too far when you're trying to cut across with the bells. That's right, and you use up energy then trying to get back up. But uh, Paul now has got it back together again here, and uh, he's, he's doing very well indeed. He just needs to keep concentrating, because this chicane section where they're zigzagging through those poles is quite hard. I think he clipped the last one there, but we'll wait and see what the judges say as he goes on down. He's coming down now towards the uh, deposit in the coit in the net. He's come a different approach to anyone else we've seen in any of the other heats as he comes straight over there into the bracket. Very high indeed. This is looking good now. Looks very stable. Very stable indeed. Hits that ball and a very good time coming up as he goes through the final gate. Having slight problems getting there, but now he's got there. It's 2.01.20 with five seconds for penalties. So a fair old time to beat there. 2.06.20. Is the hope for Petra Plavjanikova from Czechoslovakia, age 16. She comes round, goes through that gate, thought she was going to hit it with a paddle, but she managed to avoid that. Down the fall and onto the balloon. Yeah, she was too far over, but she... Oh, she's in trouble. She's, she's over, she's having to roll, and it's very, very rocky there. She did very well to control herself, and she's now into all sorts of problems because she's disorientated. She's trying to decide what to do in her own mind, but uh, you can see on her face she's looking a bit upset there as she approaches this other gate. And it was a big disappointment all round for Petra Plavjanikova, ending with a sad 2 minutes, 38.41 seconds. Another junior, a very talented junior, already a member of the German Olympic squad. It's Suzanne Hurt, 18 years old. She's still at school because uh, still at school in Germany until 20. Goes through sideways through that gate. No problems, though. Heading down the river. She managed to get herself, her body, the paddles through. Hit the balloon. She's going to go over to the left-hand side or try. She's really going a little too far downstream now. Battling back for that life belt. Yeah, oh she dear. was doing tremendously well there, but she realises that she was she just hadn't got enough power. And these young girls are 18 year old. And that is fun. Oh, that's so unlucky. She Her was face. doing so oh. well there. She looks very upset that she missed it. She's gone for the target which she's missed it's too high. A smile on her face as she comes down. She's got that, she's cleared her mind. You can tell there, she's cleared her mind. She's forgotten what happened before. She's going down now. 
and she needs a clear mind for the roll gate. And I think she's actually quite enjoying it because let's face it, the idea of paddles up for a lot of these paddlers is the, the pure fun of doing it, the pure fun of doing what paddlers don't normally have to, which is hitting all these obstacles, these balloons, bells and so on. That's right. This year we've had probably the best start list we've ever had for paddles up. People have watched the series all through. They've seen stars from around the world and uh, this is, these juniors are the, the stars of the future and some of them the stars of, of the day and uh, I think we'll see these the qualifiers from this seat being up there with the seniors. Oh, and she missed the bell there, so unlucky. What an effort there from Suzanne Hurt. She enjoyed the run but probably not the final time. Two minutes, 44.31. The next junior, Joel Scott from Great Britain. He's 18 years old. He has high hopes for the Olympics coming up. That's his uh, main ambition. Oh dear, hit the gate there. John, not, not a hot start there. No, he kept his crossbow on, which is he's paddling the other side too long there, but uh, he's, he, he's hit the ball and he's gone too far down, so he's going to be in, in problems here. Interested he's, there, he hit the ball with his hand. Yeah, and no look problem. at him holding on there, he's not oh, very dear. happy at all. He hit the ball with his hand and didn't get his hand back on his top of his paddle fast enough. Scott there just trying to think. He's going up a little tributary, I think, somewhere into the uh, mountains of Wales. Has he gone? Is he going to get through that? That is incredible. A route that I don't think any of us knew existed. <laughs> but he's managed it. He's got back up again. I suppose he can haul himself up on the rocks, can he, John? He can do anything, but I think there's a few other paddlers around wish they'd have known that in the other heats. <laughs> I think a few paddlers will be getting up and walking up the bank and putting their canoes back in if they have problems like that. But anyway, back on course with a bit of luck, powering down. Look at that. Look at that face. Look at the determination, the air blowing out from his mouth as he just pushes down towards the very fast bit. He's gone almost down the centre of that and underneath, rolling over, back up again, no worries at all. He's got to try and catch up. 1.10 at the moment, 2.06 to beat. That's right, and he's the C1 paddler. He's kneeling in his boat using a single blade, and he's out to try and beat the kayaks the same as the guys in the senior heats, but uh, here they go. He comes down under the first limbo, under the second. Can he break high into this? Going oh. for the bell. Oh! He almost went for it as he went down, didn't he? But just not quite managed. He could try, hit the bell. Nice resonant ring there. He's whacking away like anything trying to get that. And you've got to admire him for, for going across that fast moving water. An unconventional run, a shame he couldn't have been rewarded with a winning time. Joel Scott's total, two minutes, 41.02. A man who tells me he enjoys pogo dancing, it's Wojciech Bares. He's 17 years old. He comes from Czechoslovakia in the final year at secondary school at the moment, going round a very good start there, determination on his face, through the first gate, come into the first four, and the balloon hit that very nicely. Now the aim is to cross over without getting dragged down the river. The life belt, he's at it, he should be able to get that paddle through. He's done that very nicely, slightly caught at the back, and now we'll turn round, ready to go through the gate. Again, doing it sort of backwards and sideways, and up to the yellow board. Yeah, he's a very big, young, powerful paddler, this lad, and uh... He's, he's concentrating quite well, and uh, considering it's his first paddles up, he's doing very well through that gate, goes down, shouldn't have any problems with the roll gate as long as he doesn't go too fast at it, and he's eased off a bit. I think these paddlers have learned this roll gate now. They know what to do. They just get wet. A junior with a, a great sense of humour, so I guess however he comes out of this, he, uh, he won't worry too much. Going to the limbo. Some paddlers do it forward, some back, some sideways. He's a forwards limboer, obviously, and a backwards one there, so just to make things even. Now the next aim is to curl round and hit that first bell. Up he goes, and he misses. He's going to have to go round again. Is he? Or is he going to go for the second bell? No, he's gone straight for the second bell. That's OK, he tried, but he won't be happy that he's picked up a penalty because I think these boys need to be clear. Oh, he's dropped the kite. Can he find it? He's found it. It's in his teeth. That's very quick reflexes there. Little bit of fishing in the water there to pick that up. Yeah, he's, they're carrying it round the chicane and then probably something like a 50 metre sprint down to where they deposit it. So it's quite hard because they're not breathing correctly with it in the mouth. So if, it's you quite open, difficult. if you open your mouth in a bit of surprise, <laughs> you lose your coit. We've fortunately we've not seen anybody do that so far. 1.41 the time, 2.06 to beat, but uh, penalties to add to that. So we'll see what happens in a few moments. Round he goes, round that red and white gate. A little too low though, John. Yeah, he, he was low there because I think he could have been in with a very good chance, but he's still doing very well indeed now. The ball and the final gate for this young lad from Czechoslovakia, 156.39 plus five seconds for penalties. James Croft, a member of Stevenage Canoe Club in Hertfordshire, 17 years old, uh, representing Great Britain and coming to that first gate, paddling nicely, getting a lot of spray there. Very wet already, but no matter. He's heading down the fall to the first balloon. He's hit that, crossing over, ready for the life belt. 
Yeah, coming up now, paddle through, takes his time and does it very well indeed. This time of 20139 is very respectable for juniors. And uh, James coming down now very nicely indeed, gets the target. It needs to be clear. They need to keep this course clear as he does that. Coming down to the green and white pole that just keeps them over on river left so that they go through that and get wet before they come to the roll gate. And really, to make it uh, just a little bit more difficult for the paddlers, going down through that far section of white water, turns over, back up again, and now the time to uh, really accelerate down the river, ready for the limbo. And there yeah. it comes down the river, Truerin, going towards that limbo, the first one, there's two coming up. Very successful. Yeah, the, this is... Uh, the course we're using here was where the 1981 World Championships were held, and uh, this water is so powerful, it's fantastic, and hits the bell there, cuts across, tremendous... Very good running time here, 108, 110 now as it goes towards the kite. So add the course to the obstacles, and the paddles up. Paddlers really have got some challenge ahead of them to get down there and manage it in a good time without picking up penalty points. Now we're onto the chicane now. It runs sort of diagonally across the river, so there's a fair bit of manoeuvring to do to make sure they can slip through without hitting any of the gates. And uh, James Croft seems to have managed that successfully. He's doing very well indeed. I think we could see uh, the lead taken here by him. He's 201 to beat and uh, he's a bit slow there but he needs a high breakout he needs to be high here well the judges tell me in fact he did hit one of those uh, gates in the chicane so there'll be an extra five seconds there round the pole final ball good time though still good time through the final gate 150.09 plus five seconds for penalties the final paddles up paddler and the final one we'll see in this heat paul ratcliffe from Great Britain, 17 years old, goes to Eccles Sixth Form College. What a lot of splash, what a lot of spray as he goes through that first gate. Coming down now for the balloon, he hits that very good straight across. His aim to get the paddle through, he's, he's done it from the upstream side. Interesting job. Yeah, very impressive there. And no junior has cleared this course yet, and I'm sure Paul will be looking to do that. Oh, and he just dips his head back. Hits the target, this is very good. Paul is an outstanding junior paddler and a prospect for the future, which is, is fantastic. Trained, in fact, by Jim Jays, the uh, ex-British champion. That's right, Jimmy lives in Clangothlan, where I come from, and uh, he has quite a squad of paddlers. Oh, and Paul was in trouble there. He went a bit deep on his roll. He, uh, he won't be happy there. He's wasted time, but uh, he's, he's had his coach around telling him what to do, and uh, he'll be holding it together. He really is one of the top junior paddlers, and watching this, you can see why no penalty points picked up so far. Goes to the limbo, breaking out maybe a little too far down the street, but no problems. Hits that bell, cuts across, across the flow, across that white water, onto the next bell, and straight down, ready for the coit. Yeah, you can hear the encouragement for him on the course. He gets the coit in his mouth. Now, this is where some of them have been having problems, on this little chicane system section, because it is much, much more difficult than it is seen on the screen because the, the water's flowing quite fast, it's angled against the river, but uh, Paul going very well indeed. Let's hope he doesn't pick up any penalties because it would be nice to have a junior down with no penalties on that first half. Here he comes now, he's, he's taken a slightly different route from the other paddlers and uh, drops that off, now he's got to get this left-hand breakout. At a good time as well, 138, we're on 155 to beat, no penalties so far, round there, hits the ball through the final gate. We have the best time so far on this, it's 1.44.05. Halfway through the junior heat then, and some very exciting times from some very talented juniors. Paul Ratcliffe from Great Britain at the top, a very good time, 1 minute 44.05. James Croft, also Great Britain, following on 1.55.09. Wojciech Bares from Czechoslovakia, 2.01.39. Paul Ebury from Wales, he managed 2.06.20. And then following on, a little lower down the leaderboard, Petra Plavjanikova from Czechoslovakia, Joel Scott from Great Britain, Suzanne Hurt from Germany, and Aldis Klavinch from Latvia at the bottom of the juniors at the moment. We'll go into the second half now. Uh, Aldis Klavinch, Suzanne Hurt, Joel Scott and Petra Plavjanikova have done their runs. We join Paul Ebury. So let's see what the second half of these heats is going to look like for the juniors. Paul Ebry, 17 years old from Wales. He should know the River Truerian fairly well, because he does train on it from time to time, though admittedly not when there are poles and obstacles like we have in Paddles Up. No, that's right, and he's already come down, hit the yellow target now, and he's got two red poles to go round, which he's just done. Back into this driving water now, and now back down into the eddy, and this is the little trick here now. He has to pick this ball up and get it to the other side of the river where he has to put it into... A net. Now he's got it on his front spray deck. In the last three heats, we've seen different ways of doing this, and uh, 
He's done it very well indeed. Very fast, very smooth, no problems. That could be quite an interesting section of the course to watch to see how different paddlers actually approach that. Now, hits the blue ball. Oh, we think he's missed that blue ball, probably. We'll get confirmation on that from the judges. He's hit the red one and the yellow one very successfully too. He's motoring across. Now, will he be able to pirouette the front of his canoe up and hit that suspended obstacle? No, he hasn't. And still in paddles up, nobody has hit that obstacle with their canoe yet. Right, he's moving down now, and he's got a right-hand breakout round a pole here, which he needs to be high, he needs to be driving fast now. He's, he's round it, he's cutting across to two balloons that need to be burst, dislodged or something, and he's done both of those, so I think he's just got the five that he got on the blue ball at the top as he comes across to the green gate now, spins out of that, and, well, turns out of it, and he's got the tunnel to go, and this, he can pick up so many penalties on this if he's not careful, Michael. Straight through the middle he has to go without touching any, he seems to have managed it, let's look at his time, up goes the paddle, over the top of the paddles, up banner, uh, 3.41.99, add on five seconds for penalties, and it's a new lead. Another paddler from Czechoslovakia, 17-year-old Wojciech Bares, hits the first obstacle, he's hoping in due course to go to university, in fact, to study electronics and engineering little way away from what he's doing today with a fair amount of calculation going on as he goes round that first pole up to the second one a figure of eight really is the maneuver but it's a figure of eight across that fast moving water he's back into it going down the river true in and the hope is to pick up that ball let's see how he does this one what's the technique going to be it's on the spray deck keeping it between his two elbows and going across to the net where he'll he'll drop it in yeah that was really quite clever really he held it underneath and he's had no problems there very, very powerful paddle, this lad, and uh, he turns out and comes down. He needs to hit this ball, which isn't causing that many problems. It looks as though the paddlers miss it, but they just touch it as they go underneath, and there's a judge right above. He hits the red pole, but he's missed the yellow ball there, so he's picked up five seconds in penalties. Now, can he get this pirouette gate? No, he can't, is the answer. No paddler has managed it yet. We'll keep our fingers crossed for any further paddlers and see that obstacle swinging, having been hit by canoe, but not this time round. Wojciech going down the river, he's going to go for the, this right-hand breakout, round the red and white pole, he goes upstream and then over to the balloons. Charts are getting wet here, very wet if the balloons burst the wrong way. One's burst, but one not, so five-second penalty on that. He's got to beat 3.46.99, he's on 3.27 at the moment, and of, and of course add penalties to that. Through the tunnel he goes, he's managed that very successfully, up goes the paddle, and then we'll know his time, which is 3.37.58, add to that 15 seconds for penalty points. Representing Great Britain, James Croft, age 17, his ambition to be the junior world champion, 1992. No problems showing for James Croft at the beginning of the course, he hits the first obstacle, he goes across that white water coming down the falls and round that second gate very impressive here and these junior top men really want to beat the uh, results that the seniors have put up on this course and uh, get into the final so the best run down the course we've had is 331.93 by Jones so let's see what James can do here oh he's having a little bit of a hiccup there but at least he's held the ball in his arm well he did that is a that's a very very dangerous moment that if you let go of the ball it can go straight down the river at that point and all your hard work is lost but he gets it in He's turning it around, James Croft manoeuvring himself into that fast fall where you can get caught on the stopper if you're not careful. No, he's through it, the stopper, which would hold you back at the bottom of the fall. He managed the blue ball, he's got the yellow and the red. He's managed the red. Did he Did he make the yellow, John? Yeah, he made it as he came into the breakout, so uh, he's, he's, he's taking a bit of time here. He's trying to... Oh, and he's so close there, but he's now got to move on. He's got five seconds worth of penalties. The time there of... Uh, Hebrew 3.46.99, and uh, he needs to beat that to get into the final. So he's coming down now, and he, it'll be in his mind that he, he knows what he's got to do. He's got coaches and people on the bank shouting out times, I would imagine, as he comes down. He, oh, he can't afford, oh, he's got both balloons, so he's doing very well now as he comes to the green gate. A lot of paddlers have lost on those balloons. They've lost time, they've lost five seconds of balloon, but James Croft has managed it. He's swinging round. Look at that as he manoeuvres through those poles and make sure his paddles don't hit. He may well have hit one there. We'll get confirmation of that. No, he didn't. He's through, up goes the paddle, 3.38.83. Add on five seconds for penalties, a new lead. And with that, we know James Croft is into the final. What about Paul Radcliffe? The best run in the first half of the heat. Uh, 17 years old from Great Britain. He's going round. John, do we expect a good run of him? Well, he was brilliant. I was speaking to him in the break and said, I just said, that was one of the best runs I've seen. Oh, and he's hit a pole. 
Oh, what a mistake, but that he shouldn't... He's got to put it behind him, he's got to keep going down. He wants to get into the final. He's still got the chance, he's got the ball, he's in there. There's a look of terror on his face at the moment. He knows that he's so close to the Paddles Up final. Paul Ratcliffe, who started canoeing age eight, he saw people canoeing when they were on holiday in Wales and just decided he had to do it. And so for nine years he's been canoeing and got to this stand. And he's managed He's managed to put the uh, the ball in the net, he's managed the blue ball, he's going a little far down. Yeah, he's, he's broke out too low there. The, you can hear the people on the bank shouting him up there. He's, he's really got to work now to get up there. He's got the yellow one, he's got the red one. He needs to cut across now and get this pirouette if he can get that, I reckon he's in the final, but oh no, he, no chance, he's, he's slowed up a bit too much there, so now he's coming down, 247, 248, 343 is it to beat, and he needs 346.99 to be inside to get in the final. So in paddles up this year, not a single paddler has made that pirouette, which at least means they've all got a five-second penalty because of it, so maybe that evens it all out. One balloon, two balloons, a lot of water, but success there. Let's so, go through that gate, going backwards, no problems there. Yeah, he's turning into the tunnel, I mean, 3.31 was the best senior, but he's got to come down, I don't know whether he's hit any poles. This is looking good, let's look at the time. Up goes the paddle, over the banner, it's 3.19.33, add on 15 seconds of penalties, and he's into the final. Quite incredible paddling there. Let's look at the final lineup for this junior heat. Paul Ratcliffe from Great Britain, 3.34.33. James Croft also from Great Britain, 3.43.83. So those are the ones who go into the final and face the seniors. Paul Ebury from Wales, he got 3.46.99, just missed it. Wojciech Bares from Czechoslovakia, 3.52.58. Joel Scott from Great Britain, 4.58.33. Suzanne Hurt, Germany, 5.08.45. Aldis Klavinc, try hard. Latvia, he was from. 5.31.14 his time and unfortunately Petra Plavjanikova from Czechoslovakia disqualified because of missing a gate. A quite amazing junior heat. In fact, Paul Ratcliffe would have made it through even if he'd been in the seniors. So let's have a look at the final lineup for the Norwich Union Paddles Up trophy. Representing Great Britain for the senior men, Sean Pierce, Ian Raspin, another British hope, and Melvin Jones, also from Great Britain, join Marianne Strukel from Slovenia. For the senior women, Miriam Jerusalmi from France and Cordula Striepecker from Germany. And the juniors we've just seen today, Paul Ratcliffe from Great Britain and James Croft from Great Britain. And remember, in the final, they're all together. It's going to be a very exciting final for Paddles Up this year, so join us then. Hello, and this is it, the Paddles Up final. Welcome to the National Whitewater Centre on the River Truerin near Bala in North Wales, as eight of the world's top canoeists meet together in this competition. Now with me is Richard Fox, the British champion, and I must admit, Richard, I didn't expect that today you'd be standing here on the bank. I thought you'd be in the canoe. What went wrong in the heat? Well, I think I'm a bit out of practice. I didn't do Paddles Up last year, and the, the courses are pretty tricky. And I, I basically, I made too many mistakes. I hit, I hit gates or I, you know, I missed some of the, the targets or what have you. Had too many penalties. Uh, the other guys were too fast. These are the toughest heats I think I've ever been in. And uh, so I didn't make it. Well, we have the final coming up now and something you have done for us, rather special. You've already been down the second half of the course to show us what it's actually like for a paddler. So let's have a look and see how you found it. Tight round the pole and out to the downstream gate. Here we go now, slow the boat up. I think I hit it, I'm not sure. I have to hit a balloon on. First the balloon. Through the tunnel. Finish. Throw the paddles over. This is where many of the rest lost. 
the catch to get a bonus. Yes. Well, thanks very much, Richard. That is, of course, the second half of the final. Let's have a look now at the competitors on the starting line. From the women's heat, Cordula Striepecker from Germany, a gold medalist from the pre-Olympics. Representing France in this Paddles Up final, Miriam Gerosalmi, the World Cup champion who trains in Britain. The first of the British finalists, 17-year-old James Croft, the British junior champion. Ian Raspin from Great Britain won Paddles Up in 1989, and he says quite simply he's going to win this time round. Or will Sean Pierce claim the title? Another Brit, 21 years old and current men's kayak world champion. How about Paul Ratcliffe, a tremendous time in the junior heat from this 17-year-old from Britain, a strong challenge for the seniors. Marianne Strukel from Slovenia knows he's in the Olympics, hopeful no doubt of a win in Paddles Up. And Melvin Jones, he got the fastest time of all competitors in the heats, a strong British hope for the Norwich Union Paddles Up trophy. So as our first competitor sets off under the limbo gate there and hits it five seconds added straight away for Cordula Striepecker from Germany with me in the commentary box, John Gosling, how's she looking on this course? Well, she made a dreadful mistake at the start hitting that first limbo, but she seems to have sorted herself out now. There's two limbos and a 360 degree gate to start with. That's a pity because she shouldn't have really had problems. She didn't in the earlier heat with the limbos. Through the pole, the tube there with the paddle doing very well indeed now she's she's made a mistake because it should be a left-hand breakout here around a pole and it forms into a figure of eight cordula streepecker unfortunately failed to retrieve her position properly final time on the first half two minutes 52.54 representing france miriam gerasalmi age 30 oh what a bad start what a shame again hits that limbo gate we have five seconds already added to her time. Yeah, what's happened with the limbos in the final, they are lower than we had in the heat, so the paddlers are finding it much more difficult, and she's under that second one without any problem at all. But the first one is very low, and I think the technique has to be to lean backwards and not forwards. She's down now to passing the paddle through without any problem at all. Very impressive there. Miriam fighting and working hard on the water, but she's got over to this left-hand breakout very well indeed, into the eddy, the slack water, cuts across, does the full figure of eight very nicely indeed, this is simple for the paddlers because these are normal slalom techniques. So no seconds lost on that. She was in fact exactly one quarter of a second faster than Cordula Streepecker in the women's heats. So we'll see how they actually aim up. She's, she's heading for a time of 2.52.54 to beat. Uh, no problems moment. Another of those low limbos. Leans forward, under she goes. Did that very well indeed now. She's got a small little boy there, hits that well, comes through that stopper, bang, straight over, very impressive breaks out so that she's going to attack the larger boy now as she comes upstream she'll try and hit it on the move so she gets across to pick up the coin worth of course mentioning that those boys are put there for deliberate reasons i mean that is a very difficult boy to get because of that wave because of the stopper and because uh, the force takes you right the way down the river picks up the coin that's it now she's driving back into the fast flowing water and this is very good with this camera position you can see that the drop that she goes over to get to this red and white over there over the four fighting her way back upstream in the slack water, back out now, and then there's these two small boys that she has to hit, the blue one on the right, the yellow one on the left. Oh, and she's missed them. And Miriam Gerasalmi ended up with a final time of 2 minutes, 41.68 seconds. So exciting stuff already. Let's see if we can get an even better time from this 17-year-old from Stevenage Canoe Club. That first limbo gate is obviously going to be a problem in the final. Five additional seconds added to his time already. Yeah, James coming down now to the second limbo and remember the paddlers haven't had a chance to paddle this course at all They don't get a practice run, so it's very demanding for them they, They're only allowed to look and look at a forerunner go down But he's going very well indeed here and this this final is wide open all these men including the juniors can win and uh, He's coming round now very well indeed a superb paddling technique there from James And of course the marvelous thing for these juniors is that this is the only international competition where the juniors the men, the women, all compete together. And I think that gives the seniors a surprise sometimes as well. Yeah, he hit the target there, the yellow board up at high, and hits the red boy there, coming fighting his way, and, and very impressive there, the way he got that on the first move. Well, we've seen our uh, previous two paddlers there having to go a little downstream and get back to that. He got it on the way past, the coit is up, it's going to go on to the right arm, pushes off from the bank, and will now aim for a little bit of speed as he goes down. First of all, he's going to have to uh, go down, that, uh, down through that drop, there's a stop away there, he disappears for a second, round fights up past that red and white pole and cuts in very close to it, no seconds lost there at all. No, he's doing very well indeed and this is quite difficult, oh and he did that very well, full stretch for the yellow one with his paddle, fighting round this rock now into the slack water, turns, he'll try and get the bell on the move, oh and he's missed the bell. 
We're losing seconds on that. Second sticking by 137. He's still going for that bell. He's got it. He probably didn't waste. He didn't waste five seconds, as it were. So, so it was good. He he kept going for it and did finally hit it. But obviously, those seconds count as he heads towards the net where he'll drop the quoit off. Leans yeah, back over his shoulder, and there it goes. Yeah, let go of his paddles, which uh, I don't think he'd be too happy with. But uh, he now goes into the little bend into it there now. He's very gliding, angling his boat across the current now, and he's sprinting down towards the roll gate. This is looking like a very good time. Seems to have managed it very successfully. Over he goes, 2.41.68, the time to beat for James Croft from Great Britain. The time, 2.11.09, and just five seconds as penalties. So the only penalty picked up on that last run from James Croft was the limbo. Let's see if Ian Raspin gets to and he certainly appears to have done so. 24-year-old from Great Britain, a big smile on his face this morning. He said to us, he said, I am going to win. As simple as that, we'll see. That's right, he's one paddles up before and he knows what it's all about and did the limbo very impressively indeed. Lay right back on his uh, back deck of his boat as he goes down, passes his paddles through the tube there, no problems at all, fighting his way across the water. A bit wide there, that wasn't as good as James did the breakout, but uh, Ian's going very well now, keeping the boat moving. And that's the name of the game with slalom, you keep the boat flowing all the time. Keeping very low as he goes around those poles and uh, under the limbos a little earlier. Through the gate you can see the, uh, the green and white poles just behind the trees there. There the board, he's hit that, he's through the next gate. Those gates of course are diagonally across the river so he has to fight backwards and forwards across the current. He's hit that limbo gate. He won't be happy with that, he just didn't lean back far enough. He, got, he went slightly wrong on the second green and white gate there so he was having problems and he's broken out low for this second uh, boy here, the larger one. So he's having to cut across, he'll just hit that on the move, there's no real problem there into the air, he picks up the coin very fast, into his mouth, so this will be different, he's carrying this all the way down in his mouth. Quite possible to get caught on that rock we just saw on the right-hand side there, but they've avoided it so far. Little far section, he'll disappear for a moment, bobs back up again, the coin's in his mouth, gripping it hard as he goes around that red and white pole and now gets a little bit of speed to go down, hits the yellow ball. He missed the blue one though, he, 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 I think he was a bit shocked and uh, he missed the blue one completely so he's picked up two lots of penalties so far, got the bell there, didn't ring very loud but he certainly hit it. But very neatly hit that, through the red, uh, through the green and white gate, going downstream, drops off the coit, kept hold of his, look at that, look at that grit on the face, he pushes back, looking hard towards the chicane, which does of course bend in the middle, he goes around the curve after the third pole and there's three more to go through that narrow final section and the last bit of the course for Ian Raspin from Great Britain is the roll. We have 2.16 seconds to beat, he's on 2.05. Let's see the final times he goes through that gate. It's 2.07.54 with 15 seconds as penalty points. So we're sticking on a time of 2.16.09, which is James Croft's time to beat on the first half. He hits the limbo. This is Sean Pierce from Great Britain, age 21. Not a good start, but doing, John, what a lot of paddlers are doing at the front end. That's right. Sean uh, will not be happy to hit that first limbo. Oh, and he's hit the second one, so he's already picked up 10 seconds in penalties. You can see on his face he's looking a bit disorientated. I'm not sure what it is. Sean Pierce fought hard, but not hard enough to win. His final time, 2 minutes, 22.83 seconds. In the first half of this Paddles Up final, we're still trying to beat James Croft's time. This is Paul Ratcliffe, age 17, from Great Britain. We saw a tremendous run, didn't we, John, in the in the in his heat. He would have even made into, made to, as a senior into the final. That's right, but he's clipped that first limbo gate, and Paul uh, it could be one of the favourites for this. He could take it because he's paddling so well, and now he's come down. He's already down to the uh, breakout gate, sprinting along. Brilliant technique here as he goes round that first ball straight across the current, very high indeed around that second red pole, so he's doing very well indeed here, Paul. Making a cracking speed as he goes across the river, wasting no time, just angling himself up there for the gate. Remember, this one goes across the river, he hits the board, just glances off it, that's all he needs to do. He carries on down, and the next obstacle he's going to have to get to is that ball, he manages that, crosses back across through the flow of the white water, cuts down, not too low, that's pretty good. Yeah. James has done that, James Croft has done that the best, but that, this is very impressive paddling by Paul Ratcliffe here, he's going tremendously quick, 107, he's, he's a young lad, he's only just 18, coming on 18 as he comes down now to this four, his tremendous skills he's showing, he's got to come around, he's still holding that kite in his, in his mouth as he comes down, can he get the yellow, you got the yellow and the blue, this is a very impressive run. One very quick swipe to get both of those, that's good. Goes through the rocks and is now going to turn round, ready for the bell? Very simple, got that beautifully. Uh, like he wasn't even trying to get it, just came at the end of his paddle, there was the bell, he hit it through that gate, he's turning round into the slack water, off goes the coit, 
and into the chicane. That, this is a very impressive run. I just hope you can hold it together on this chicane because it is a difficult chicane with that kink in the middle after the third pole and now he's into the tighter section there where the very oh and he's clipped one of the oh he's, he's clipped, clipped two. two that is a tremendous shame 216 he's trying to beat he's on 154 at the moment he will curse himself for that goes through the final gate 157 53 and 15 seconds as penalties but that does take young Paul Ratcliffe into the lead let's see how Marianne Strukel from Slovenia age 27 can do we haven't had a single paddler down yet who hasn't picked up a penalty point at least five seconds yeah, he's going very well, and uh, it shows the uh, the quality of the course, really, that the paddlers are having trouble clearing it. But uh, he's looking pretty good at the moment. He's taking it steady. He's coming down now to pass his paddle through. The paddlers don't haven't had many problems with this, and he hasn't either, as he comes over to the left-hand breaker. It looks as though he'll be high in this. Oh, very impressive there. Figure of eight across the river he goes. He's going to cut it very fine. Look at that. Marvellous positioning as he went across the river. And uh, down he goes. Marion now coming through to the gate which will take him diagonally across the river. Up he'll go for that yellow board. There he goes, and into that second green and white gate. The limbo now, under the limbo, no problem at all. Now, this is an easy section to do, or proven easy. We thought it'd be more difficult, but they can lose time on this move here. And the power there, he's dropped very low. He's gone around where Raspin was, and uh, this is, I presume, to try and get himself across faster, but uh, it's it's much slower than the James Croft manoeuvre. And, of course, the power of the River Truerin at the moment is such that he hits his boat a little there. The power is such that if they if they do miss the obstacles, then they're taken well downstream, and it really is a, a big battle and a loss of a lot of energy to get back up again. But he's going well around that red and white upstream pole and crossing back over now, ready for the two hanging boys, the yellow one, and the blue one, oh, not sure about that. Did we miss that or not? We'll find out from the judges shortly, no doubt. Through the rocks he goes and crosses over, ready for the bell. Yeah, very successful and ready to pick up the coin. No problem at all there. Through the green and white gate, just bringing him downstream. Breaks out to drop the coin off. It is, of course, deliver the coin. That's why he got the coin some while ago. So delivers the coin now and into the chicane. Yeah, the chicane now, he's looking very impressive on this. He powered his boat there, ducked the back end, does a spin to come down through these last two and he's going very well indeed here timing a little worrying though worrying though for uh, Marianne Strugel 212 to beat and he is as he turns over goes through the gate and uh, that's fine the roll there as he comes to that final gate a time of 216.89 with five seconds as penalties let's have a look at the final finalist for paddles up this year it's Melvin Jones from Great Britain this could be a historic run he did the fastest time in the heats he's been in paddles up every single year and he hasn't won yet but John he's looking good yeah he's he's really confident he, he knows he can win it but uh, this this time of Paul Ratcliffe's is very impressive Melvin can be well inside but he needs to keep clean he's got to got to keep clean all the way down this course crossing over the figure of eight up the upstream pole he's managing that without any problems look at that look at that energy look at that strength fighting into the water the downstream gate crossing over the river again across the current he appears to have missed that board he's missed that he's coming back for it he thinks it's worthwhile is that is that a good idea well I think it's a good idea and he'll want to be clean anyway but uh, how he made that mistake I don't know I think he, he must have just forgot it was oh and he's clipped the limbo so this is disorientated Jones now he's he's having problems he's got to clear his mind of what that mistake was and uh, just carry on down so he's made another one there because he wanted to do that on a full spin he's missed he the boy altogether so he's picking up really too many penalty points. Melvin Jones is going to be very disappointed by that. Picks up the coit. And now the fast section will disappear over that fall. There he goes, round. The hope there, obviously, John, is not to get carried too far downstream. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going very well indeed. And, uh, in fact, I'm, I think he hit that orange uh, boy, you know. I think he just did it so fast on his uh, paddle. That he just wasn't, wasn't visible he'd done it. Well, if he has, that's good for him, because these five-second penalty points are what uh, a paddler will really want to miss out on the bell no problems there and the downstream gate yeah he's having problems finding depth of water there Melvin is no one else did but uh, he's, he's being shouted down there's people running down you can hear him shouting him down this course and uh, he's trying to keep it steady now because he'll have had a radio someone tell him the time that he's got to beat and uh, he knows what he's got to do let's look at how Melvin Jones is doing it through that chicane he seems to have managed it successfully 212 is the time to beat he's on 204 but we're gonna to have to add penalty points to that he does his Eskimo roll through that final gate and there he goes 208 18 with five seconds as penalties 
And what a final it's turning out to be. Paul Ratcliffe from Great Britain, the 17-year-old with 2 minutes, 12.53 seconds. Just over half a second behind, it's Melvin Jones, also from Great Britain, 2 minutes, 13.18. James Croft from Great Britain, 2 minutes, 16.09. Marianne Strugel from Slovenia there with 2 minutes, 21.89. And the final four at the moment, Ian Raspin from Great Britain, Sean Pierce from Great Britain, Miriam Jerusalmi from France, and Cordula Striepecker from Germany. So we go into the second half of the final. Cordula Striepecker, Miriam Jerusalmi, Sean Pierce, Ian Raspin, and Marianne Strukel have done their runs. We join with James Croft. James Croft putting his energies into winning paddles up. The final half. There he goes round that pole, cutting very close to it, pushing off from the bank. This 17 year old, he's trying to straighten his boat. You can see the determination. Look at that, look at that as he grits his teeth hard, pulling round for that boy. The blue boy suspended, he hits that with no effort. Well, it seems no effort at all. Across the water and up for the red boy. Yeah, no problem there for him either. And he spins out of that now and comes downstream. And there's a bit of a sprint here for them before the next obstacles. He's having to work hard, the time there, 409.8 of Sean Pierce. Comes to the pirouette. Oh, and he's missed the pirouette! Is he going to stay and try it again, or is he just going to carry on? Remember, there's a penalty of five seconds if he doesn't make it. He's going to try again, he's made it. So, lost a few seconds on that second attempt, but at least didn't get the penalty. The extra five seconds added to his time. No problems with that yellow board, but what happened to that pole? He's he had it now anyway. He, he got his boat at the wrong angle as he was coming into it and had a real problem. He ooh, annihilates that uh, red boy there as it comes down to the balloon. The suspended there, the blue balloon above the bridge. He's got to burst it. Taking out a few frustrations here, that balloon will not go. Is he going to go backwards and try it? I think he is. One of those balloons that just won't burst. Well done, well done. James Croft, he's managed to break the balloon at long last into the tunnel, measuring up for this double tunnel. There's a few poles, then the dip, and then into the next section of the tunnel. Nearly got caught in the stopper there, John. That's right, that stopper wave turns and holds the boat very hard. Hits the bell now, and look at this sprint, he's got to come down. He's working really hard. You can hear people on the bank shouting him down. He's Time's running on for him now, 3.50. The red and white pole. He turns round, pulls hard against the current. You can see the rocks very close to the surface there. The four boys, the left, right, left, right again. And now paddles down as fast as he can to the Paddles Up banner hanging over the River Truerin. In a moment, the paddle will go up. And we'll know that for James Croft, over the top it goes. We have a time of 4 minutes, 10 seconds, 66. And we add on five for penalties. One of the top British paddlers, second fastest in the first half of the Paddles Up final, Melvin Jones negotiating well round that upstream pole. Yeah, he's uh, looking pretty determined as he comes down, he's holding the boat. He'll know that it's a step... Oh, Ooh. and he's, he's missed that first blue boy. That, he was probably too slow, he won't be pleased. Now he's going to have to put on some power going down this sprint section. He nearly lost everything, in fact, he nearly looked as if he was going over in the, uh, in the current and the waves as they came over that fall section. So five seconds picked up there. The pirouette, he's managed that. He'll be pleased at that. He's got this yellow target now. He's done that left-hand breakout round the red pole. It's a bit wide, but it's quite good, that is, now, as he cuts back out into this fast-flowing water. Through this downstream gate, hits that red boy there. Moving very well now, Jones is, as he comes down to burst the balloon. We've not seen too many problems with that boy, but what about this balloon? Sometimes they'll burst and sometimes they won't. <laughs> he got it with his hand. He's burst the balloon at last, and now measuring up, getting himself in the right position for that tunnel. There he goes, through the first poles, into the drop at the bottom, and he's hit at least one there. We'll know from the judges at the end how many penalty points he's picked up there, but hits the bell, rights himself, and heads on down for the sprint, where he needs to pick up time. If he can power it down, he should do well. Yeah, he's moving down. The time's not looking too bad, but he has picked up some penalties, so he's into the breakout. He's pulling up through that now, and then he's got these four boys to hit. Left, right, left, right. He's done the first, done the second, done the third, done the fourth. He's got a sprint now to the finish. Let's have a look at the time to beat. 4.09.80, including penalties, as Melvin Jones reaches the final, up goes the paddle, and the time, 3.52.85. We add on 15 seconds of penalties, and it's a new lead. What pressures there must be on this young man now, 17-year-old Paul Ratcliffe. He could take the Paddles Up trophy if he wins this. If he doesn't win it, Melvin Jones takes it, and he will know that as he fights round that upstream pole, negotiating, trying to get into the, the main flow of the tide, of the, of the actual current, hits the ball and comes across. Doing very well at the moment. He's got to be careful not to go too slow, but uh, he knows that Jones missed the first ball because he saw it. I wouldn't think he knows the time he's got to beat. 
but uh, he's working very well indeed. 407.85 there as he comes to the pirouette, gets it with no problems at all. Two minutes, 47 is time at the moment. Remember, of course, we had the first half on to the second half. It's a total time. He's looking good so far. Very controlled there, John. Very controlled paddling indeed. I've been very impressed with Paul in this uh, Paddles Up competition this year. He's looked very cool all the way down. The determination on his face that we're going to hear a lot about him. Is he going to be lucky with this balloon or not? Yes, well, eventually, fairly quickly, it went. He's turning round, ready for the tunnel. All those poles he could hit. Now, a lot of them are swinging anyway. Let's see how he does through the second half of the tunnel. He appears to have made it through with no worries at all. That was fantastic. He's really going well now. Now he's coming down on this sprint. Listen to the encouragement from the people on the bank. We could be looking at the winner of Paddles Up. As he comes down now, he's coming down towards that red pole. 4.07 to beat, he is on 3.34. Yeah, and as far as I know, he's clean at the moment, so he's got round that pole. He's got to hit these boys, he can't make a mistake. He's doing incredibly well, and he just clips them all, and he's on his way down. All he's got to do to get no penalties, it appears, is to get that paddle over the banner. This is Paul Ratcliffe at the end of Paddles Up. It is 3.51, he is the winner of Paddles Up. And there we have it, confirmation of that. Paul Ratcliffe from Great Britain at 3 minutes 51.24. And look how far he is ahead of Melvin Jones, who was leading right up to the end. Another Great Britain paddler, 4.07.85. He got Sean Pierce, Great Britain again, 4.09.80. And in fourth place, another paddler from Great Britain, the youngest in the competition, James Croft, came in at 4 minutes 15.66. So surely one of the most exciting paddles up we've had. The winner, 17-year-old Paul Ratcliffe from Britain, only the third ever British paddler to win the competition. And to present the trophy, Andrew Harrivan from Norwich Union. And that's it for another Paddles Up. We hope you've enjoyed the series. If you've been inspired to get in a canoe and try a little bit of it out, then you should be able to get information from your local sports centre or else from the British Canoe Union in Nottingham. From all of us on Paddles Up, bye-bye.